What's up, YouTube? Uh, and Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, etc. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Prestige Reef Talk Show. My name is Alex, aka Reef Talk. Uh, and with me, as always, is Ryan from the world's best coral selling website, prestigereef.co.uk. Ryan, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm all right. How is the world's best coral selling website? Uh, it's busy. Busy is what it is. Um, <laughs> Are we are we going straight in? Literally throwing Why me not? straight yes, in. Straight in, <laughs> Ryan. Go. Okay. I have been. I've done a lot of frags today. Um, but I don't know if you've seen from my Instagram post some of them where they've got these massive colonies of. I haven't put a recent one up, so if that's what you're looking oh, I for, see. I was. So I, I haven't I, seen I, you. Yeah. I have these massive colonies of um, Montipora, things like uh, in grafted Montipora and stuff like that. Well, I have decided to tie everything up, so I now have plenty of uh, frags of all different types of Montipora, which is why today I put in a <laughs> Montipora mystery box on the website. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, and the other thing that I have been doing is I've been trying to catch a fish um, from the coral farm to put into quarantine, which will then go into the water box. And uh, if anyone's ever tried to catch a fish, it's not always an easy process. <laughs> Yeah. So, what uh, what what fish trap are you using? Uh, I think I, it's just it's one of those acromedic. Like, yes, it is. Yeah, yes, one yeah, of those yeah. plastic the ones with the, the trap door. Yes, I have spent yeah. hours yeah. sitting and watching. Yeah, yeah. Um, for some reason, <laughs> it's in the farm. Did you say? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that must be even harder. Because like, so when I've done it, it's been in the living room, and yeah. I sit there with my hand on the, the ring pull thing. Yeah. But I'm watching TV, so it doesn't really matter. But you've got to sit in the farm. Oh, no, I'm sitting across the room in the farm. So I'm not no, even no. near the tank because yeah. the fish is so scared. The fish is a yellow tank, um, uh, by the way, everyone. And um, it is a uh, a pain in the ass to catch, <laughs> is, is, is the answer. I have caught it now. I caught it this morning, but it took me about four days. Is it old or young or? Uh, big it's, or only, small? it's only a small one. It's a yeah, tank okay. red one, so it would have been within. It came from one of my customers <laughs> who broke down their tank. Um, so uh, yeah, I've had I've had I've had it for a, about a year now, but he must have had it probably for a year as well. Uh, it looks like a normal yellow tank. You know how sometimes the tank red ones look a bit dodgy or not as colourful. Just looks like a perfectly yeah, normal yeah, like a, wild yeah. caught yellow tank now. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, so for some reason, he would swim to the very edge of the box. Every other fish, <laughs> straight in, straight out. Every, I got a purple tang in there going in and out, different wrasses. For some oh, for some reason, this fish would get there, would know that I was waiting for it to go in, and then yeah. would stop and swim away. And he did that it for four winding days. you up. <laughs> it's like, yeah. watch this. <laughs> lads, lads, watch this. <laughs> I'm going to do it again. I had like... Uh, uh, like <laughs> post traumatic stress from th this box, cyber box from the previous owner, because yeah, it seemed yeah, yeah. to know not to go in. And then the moment <laughs> the moment it went in, I closed the door, and the fish. You, it was. It must be thinking. Shh, I, I knew. knew. I was what right. Dave. I, I told knew. you. You said I was crazy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, that that is what it is basically. So he, he's now upstairs in the quarantine tank. Um, I also put an, a yellow assessor in there. Um, okay. Someone said to me the other day that um, they'd never the seen upside it. upside-down ones? I've never seen it go upside down. Oh, I've really? had it for I a while. they were only upside down. No, they they do hang upside down in caves. Um, yeah. And I've, I've had a blue one, which uh, did go upside down. But this the yellow one, I've never, ever seen it go upside down. Maybe it's, maybe it's unwell. <laughs> because yeah. it's not going upside down. I've, I've only ever seen them in shops. I've never had one. I don't think I've seen one in a tank. And they're just... They're just upside down, and it, yeah. it looks. It, they don't. It doesn't look like there's something wrong with them because they're not like. Because if a fish is swimming funny, you know straight away. Yeah, but it's yeah. like that's weird. <laughs> It'd be interesting because it was it was in a tank that had no rocks in it, so it didn't yeah. have any caves, and it was yeah. swimming up normally. So it'd be interesting when it goes into the water box. Um, oh, someone's just said their yellow sesa never goes upside down either. Maybe we got we got a couple of broken ones. <laughs> Are you sure it's not a royal grammar? <laughs> if you think a, a yellow assessor and a royal grammar look even remotely similar <laughs> well they got bits of yellow on them <laughs> yeah, but, yeah but one of them's entirely missing purple yeah this is true <clears throat> it, looks more, it looks more like a um one of those uh what, what's that ras that you always say it's not that ras 
Oh, the yellow rust. Yellow chorus <laughs> rust. Yeah, there's no chorus. Halicorius chorus. Yeah. Halicorius chorus. Um. So yeah. So there's that. So those three are now in the quarantine tank. I will probably get a rat out of there as well, just because then I've got something for pests. I've got something for algae, and I've obviously got the angels. I like it. But just going back to catching the fish, how did you actually catch him? Did you did you put food in there? Was did you was it just patience? Uh, so I lost the. There's like a little insert for food. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. and I lost that. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, uh, which I'm sure loads of people will have lost it. So I was just putting the food in, and the food would stay in the trap. It, for yeah. some reason, the flow was making it like a chrysal tank where it would go round. <laughs> um, but as soon as the other fish go in there, some of it sort of sneaks out, and then the yeah. yellow tang was eating it on the, on the side. So, but yeah, I just I literally just stood there, like you've seen. So it's in it's in the the far tank. You you've obviously seen the coral yep. farm, but it's in the far tank. By the same. Um, at, at the top. And I was by the door. <laughs> wow. So, because Very if crazy. I went anywhere near it, um, and actually there was one time it did go in and I pulled it and it didn't go down. <laughs> oh, I've done that. Yeah, it's so annoying. It, yes. Because there's a little, um, like there's like a, a like a, a nylon string attached to like a, a bit of plastic that yeah. holds the door up. Yeah, yeah. And the theory is when you tug on it, it pulls the plastic away and the door slides yeah. down. Yeah. But I've done that a couple of times, and it's like, oh, and it, it obviously it shakes the box so the fish swim away. <laughs> that I think is why the yellow tang wouldn't go back in for four days. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. If the if if the door isn't perfectly in uh, perfectly aligned with like the edges, yeah. it, it gets stuck, so it doesn't fully go down because the door angles slightly. It's sort of like it's still, angle, yes. isn't it? yeah. So I, I I don't I I don't know if this is the right way you do it, but I angle the entire box so it's at a slight up angle, which means that the door is pointing straight down. I did not do that. No, I, so it obviously works the other way, but yeah, yeah, I could have tested it. <laughs> oh, I see what you mean. You're so, it, so in theory, it will fall faster if it's if it's falling direct. Yeah, because I didn't want it to get stuck if it was at an angle. But I have had that box for probably twelve years now. <laughs> Fish traps are so useful. You only use them like maybe once a year. <laughs> brilliant. But, They're so good. But when you use when you have it, you're like, yep, yeah, that is really do you know what I had to get a um do you remember I told you once or I told everyone um that I had seven dwarf angel fish all in a tank yeah, all yeah, together. Yeah. And then they all and then a coral beauty started One of eating them the coral. The rest to eat corals, yeah. Yes. <laughs> well angel fish are very, very hard to catch, even with a fish trap. Because they stay right near the rocks, they're not like openly swimming like like tangs yeah, are. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, and I had a a a breeding pair of flame angels, and I caught the male, but I couldn't catch the female. So in the end, I took the male, put it into a little Tupperware box, put it into the fish trap, and the female swam straight That's into hilarious. it <laughs> because she there was no. I I tried for days Honey and trap. days. But that, that's the sort of thing you've got to do. So when I've done it, I tend to find algae eating fish go in all the time yes. because they're because they're, they're like, there must be some algae on there. Let's go and have a look. So yeah. my fox face, I could catch him in, in a heartbeat. It goes yeah. in every time I set it up. Um, but why, every time I've done it and it's worked, if it's an algae eating fish, I put a rock in there that's got algae on it and they go in yeah. or frag plugs that are covered yeah, in algae. Yeah. I had a file fish that had started eating my acans. So I just put put the A can, yeah, can yeah. and he went straight in. And anything like I had a oh I had a, a cleaner ass yeah. um <clears throat> that um that had started pecking my clam, as it were. And so I put the clam in the trap and he went straight in. Although this I used to I used a Coke bottle, a two-liter yeah. Coke bottle, cut the, yeah. the, the end off, turned yeah. it upside down, so he had to go in the 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 bottle cap thing. Yeah. And then they can't get out. <laughs> Yeah, I did that as well. Uh, I've I've tried that bottle. Um, yeah, because it's much cheaper to make your own, but in the end, it's just better to buy one. <laughs> the, the 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 actual paid for, and they're only like oh, I say only forty or fifty quid. Uh, I, this, I was surprised the, they're that much, are they? I can't remember how much it is. It, that, I think that's how much it was, but they are much much better. The bottle trap does work, yeah. but because it, effectively it's a, a bottle of Coke, so what what the the entrance is size of a pound coin basically. Yeah, yeah. And so the fish, for, for fish to get in there, for a start, it only works on fish that are small enough to go in. Yeah. And it's like if you've got a massive, like, 12-inch square trap door, anyone, the fish will go in there all the time. If you've got yeah, a tiny yeah. little entrance, they're much less, it's much, 
They just take longer. They gotta be smart and smart enough to get into the to the to exactly. a coke bottle. Yeah, yeah. And fish are pretty dumb. <laughs> so, but they, it it worked. To be fair, it only worked when I put the clam in, but it did work. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> you couldn't get enough of it. He was like, I just want to eat it. <laughs> it's funny the things that we that we uh, you like. No one would. No one teaches you this. They don't. If you're going to learn how to about being going into the the marine aquarium hobby, you'll learn about all sorts of things and testing everything, but no one teaches you what to do when, when there's a fish you need to catch. That's yeah. like one of these little, like smaller, like add on bits of the hobby, which are, they can be fun <laughs> on day one, on day four, you're fed up. <laughs> That's, and it depends why you're trying to catch it. So when I, my, um, uh, Scarus Koi, I was trying to catch him. He'd started eating, scraping my, uh, most expensive SBS frags. Oh. And I was like every hour, is costing me like fifty oh, quid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so um so that was that was stressful. And the the um the uh, what's it called? The um Harlequin Tusk. He'd started eating everything. <laughs> so I wanted to get him out. But then times like I wanted to catch the purple. I tried to catch a, a, a coal tang one. It just he wasn't having it. But I caught a purple tang and he was being a bit of a bully, but it, it wasn't too bad. And it took a few days just sitting by the sofa all evening waiting. Yeah, yeah. But that's I, what I find is putting something in there that um that is inquisitive that will make them go in if they're inquisitive. Yeah. And then patience. Because <laughs> it can well, sometimes it's straight away, sometimes it takes days. You can cover the um the box as well in stuff. Even if even just very like not completely. You can just put a few like rocks or whatever around it or on it. Um, just to disguise it a little yeah, bit. It, yeah, yeah. So it's not quite um, so obvious. <laughs> yes, the fish are probably going. Look, man, look. We know that's <laughs> yeah. that's a trap. <laughs> but... um, so, uh, so this guy said. Um, so, so reef says I found mirrors work the best. I tried putting a mirror behind the fish trap. Yeah, but it didn't work because <laughs> uh, yeah. the theory was they'd see a, a, their reflection and they'd go yeah. into the the fish trap thinking it was there, but it didn't work for me. I, I've had it where you can distract you. You can definitely distract fish in that way. Like if you're adding a new tank, where you put a mirror yeah, on the side sure. of the tank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But well, so I tried that with when I uh, when I got the copper band and my purple tank was just beating him up, and that that worked for a short while. Yeah. But every time I took the mirror down, even after like a week, yeah. um, he'd get the, the purple tank would be like, right now I've finished chasing that other purple tank. I only go and get the copper band. Yeah, yeah. And it and then it uh, I felt I also found. Like all day, the purple tang was attacking itself, its reflection, just like pushing against the glass. Yeah. And it was like, that is stressing that fish out. Yeah, yeah, now, definitely. Even though he's the bully, it's not his fault. It's my fault because I've chosen the wrong fish effectively. Yeah. And yeah. I, I'm stressing him out. And it's just like, if it, if it works after a day, wicked. But when you're a few days in and it's constantly on, it's up all the time, it's yeah. not fair on the fish, is it? So, you would think that it would just... Because yeah, fish get used to each other after a period yeah. of time. You'd think it would just get used to this, the extra yeah, purple yeah. tang. Yeah, Although, yeah. if you think about it, every time, it's not like the fish is they're constantly exposed to each other. <clears> every <throat> time that the purple tang swims away from the mirror, the other tang's gone. Yeah. So, it's, so he can't get used to living with it. If you and see he never I mean. got the satisfaction of giving him a licking because he wanted to beat him up, didn't he? Yeah. But he never got to do it. <laughs> so yeah. every time he saw him, he was like, oh, come here. I want to bite you. <laughs> I had a, a tang once, which it was a, a sailfin tang. This was relatively early on. Mm -hmm. um, that was really tiny. And it got absolutely beaten up when it first went in the tank. This was before I was a bit more of a, a conscientious. Um, look, it's, I be, I'm not being honest. Like mm. probably 14 years ago, I just put a fish in and just see how it, see how it goes. Mm. But this fish that was about this big, after about two years, grew to about this big. And then that fish became the bully after, after outgrowing all the other tanks that were in the tank. It's from an inch to about six inches for the benefit of the podcast. Oh, yes. <laughs> if so you, yeah. you think that's six inches, do you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You read into that what you will. <laughs> um, so you've been chasing fish all day, basically, or week. Uh, yes, yes. And it, it, this isn't really relevant, but kind of is. The only thing I wanted to let people know, if you do go down the route of wanting to quarantine your fish, it's it, first, it's not that difficult, but secondly, um, some people will think I'd never used a copper test kit before. So it's intimidating if you don't know what something is. Have you ever used a mm. copper test kit? No. No. It's literally exactly the same as a HANA alkalinity checker. <laughs> so oh, so you use the HANA one? 
yeah, they use the Hannah Hannah Copper okay. test kit, right? Yeah, and yeah, it, yeah. it's basically like instead of putting a, a liquid reagent in, you put the powder reagent in, yeah. and there's no waiting three minutes or anything like that. It just does it straight away. Yeah. It's really easy to use. Like the alkalinity so, one. Yeah, exactly the same as the alkalinity one. So pretty much. That's good. I do yeah. like those Hannah checkers. They're just yeah. very easy, aren't they? Not all of them, but most of them. No, it's, it's the, the the thing. I so the the best ones. I saw someone testing. I can't remember where it was. Was it on Facebook or I'm sure it was on a YouTube video, but I can't remember which one it was. But I saw someone testing nitrate the other day, yeah. and they were trying to read the difference between the nitrate and like, and they were like, going, oh, is it two parts million or is it five or is it ten? And I, I, just, I hated that. I could yeah. never work out. And I was always like, am I too close to the tank? Let me go and stand by the the window. And then you, when you're close to the window, it's too bright, and so it, it changes. It's like reading yeah. the difference is like I think it's five. But it could easily be one, and it could be ten. <laughs> that's what that's yeah. the best thing about hand checkers for me is yeah. that they take that away from you and they read it more consistently. Um, Most of them oh, are worth it. Not so much. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you, not, not so much. Uh, I don't like calcium. Calcium, calcium is... and the, the nitrate low range, which they brought out not that long ago, and I saw a few people buying them, and it just looked like it was like it's like a half hour job. Well, you need a staff of four people on hand. And if yeah. you get one step remotely wrong, forget it. <laughs> yeah. No, but the nitrate high range is brilliant, and the phosphate ultra low yeah, range yeah. and the alkalinity, which we say this all the time. <laughs> but um, True. there's, I did say someone asked them um, the other day on the. Um, I made a video on Friday about the. It was equipment, so I know you're all you're all over it <laughs> about the refactory smart tester. Oh, I've definitely seen that. <laughs> exactly. Uh, that if I have if I do say so myself, that's a good video. Like as oh. far as reviews go, thorough, independent, you know, unbiased. It's a quality video. You should check it out. Okay. Anyway, um, me and everyone asked, else watching should go check that out. Well, everybody already has. So, oh, you know, true. Yeah, it's only true. the hardcore uh, fans who uh, come. So to if, it, if it goes up by one, you'll know I watched it tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, it goes. See, that's the thing. They do go up slowly. Product reviews, I don't ever find do that well. Anyway, only, only the big ones. If you do, if you do a review of an Ecotech light, generally you'll get quite like some of my ones have got like 40, yeah. 40 50,000 views of those. Sorts it's of also things. when they're brand new as well. Yes. Cause yes. this, I was giving this about a month or so after it came out and yeah. then I had to wait a few weeks to get used to it. Yeah. And by that point, some of the hype has died down. So, yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, so have I, am I, uh, why isn't that sharing? There we go. Right. So this is so this is the the so I did the review on it basically. I've had this up and running for actually about a month now, three weeks at least, maybe even four weeks. Um, but I when I first set it up, it tests your phosphate uh, automatically. You have it cut the minimum it can do is once a day, which is a bit of a shame. But actually, it's good having that data. But you can set it to test up to every hour. And okay. I thought, well, let's see what phosphate does uh, hour to hour. What do you reckon phosphate does hour to hour? I would well, assume over the course it, of a day. I would assume not a lot. Even when, what about when you feed? No, mm, there'll be some phosphate in the food. Yeah, because because most of the phosphate I would get, hey, I just, has I to just go saw, through some kind of process. Yes, I just saw the oh, graph anyway, like this. Oh, <laughs> so, <laughs> why am I even trying to guess? But there's yeah, so so most so I think that the phosphate must have to go through some sort. To, to read phosphate, it must have to go through some kind of process of decomposing or whatever. Yeah. But there must be some liquid phosphate effectively in the food. But anyway, it doesn't actually make like it, you're you're absolutely right. It doesn't really uh, change an awful lot. So this is it. Let me. So this was. You can tell the point at which I started adding uh, more roophos. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so this was actually this was just a random test. It just randomly dropped from 0.1 to 0.7. And yeah. I found that quite a lot, actually, was you'd put Roophos in. It wouldn't do anything. It would do a little bit. And then suddenly you'd wake up one day and it's dropped a, quite a lot. I don't know why that is, but it was it was it did that on a few occasions. Yeah, but but it's, then gone back, it's then gone back up. So that's just that's just a, a, an off reading. And then, maybe. Yeah. But it, it happened yeah, it has enough. To be. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, the, that's probably the better problem with that. What about if what about if you're testing once a day and then the next day that one off that one off reading you know what i'm trying to say yeah, yeah. the one that's is that day's reading if you see what i mean <laughs> what do you mean well you're testing every hour so you know that that that, that it's oh, back up an hour later. whereas but that's, so that, that's why that with any anything like this 
if you react instantly to one reading, that's the wrong way to do it. hundred uh, percent, yes. <laughs> and so you should always just like, and so actually, so I, I, I'd not thought that to be fair, but you're, you're absolutely right because it goes all, it's all steady, 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 then one off. You're right. Maybe you're like a snail got stuck over the inlet or whatever, yeah. you know, or dose too much. I don't know, whatever. But yeah, it's a good point. But you should, but if you, if you react on that one thing and panic, that's the wrong way to do it because before you have an automatic tester of alkalinity, phosphate, whatever, you wouldn't have done anything. You wouldn't have even known about that. Yeah, true. So just follow trends. And to be fair, this is only, I've only had this a few weeks. So I don't know if it's accurate. I think it's what tank is it accurate. This is on my main tank. How is it? So I feed, well, only two cubes a day at the moment. But what I think, I can, and I can't remember what point I started dosing, uh, adding Rovos, but it must have been at this point because it goes down steadily. But before then, basically, this is hour by hour. So yeah. we'll start on midnight 0.13 and then every hour later 0.13 0.13 0.13 0.13 0.14 0.14 0.14 that's last night's <laughs> dinner coming out that's what yeah, I exactly yeah yeah <laughs> but it was really steady and and i was expecting i did i did test i can't i can't show you the, the points but i did test before and after feeding because i always thought i wonder if there is a small spike yeah uh, and and if you don't feed for a couple of days, does that mean it really plummets or whatever? And I think the reality is phosphate's pretty stable. Yeah. Um, and which is that makes sense, right? So. Yeah, but, I'd say because um, they, the, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm no scientist, so I, this, this is just my assumption that the phosphate in our tank is actually from food that has been digested previously, so it's not from the same day's food. It's like a yeah, a, a week's delay on it or whatever. It's a delayed effect, yes. Yeah, that would make sense. It's moving my glass of water over. Um, but uh, but yeah, someone asked about um, someone asked how it, uh, what happens day to day. I've got no intention of testing every hour <laughs> going, going forward. forward. But I just thought let's do that. So I did that for about two or three days, um, and that's what happens. Not a lot <laughs> well, on my tank anyway. Maybe it's different on other tanks, but I, I think it's probably an average one. I wonder how much that costs to test every hour. In terms Not of the with... reagents, quite cheap, but, right. but if you were doing it every hour, so I think 27 quid gets you 160 tests, apparently. Okay. So if you're doing it every hour, to be fair, that's like a week. Yeah, <laughs> so... I must have used up quite a lot. Um, but yeah, if you're testing every day, it'll last like five months. Yeah, but the thing, the trouble with that is this can also test like calcium nitrate and magnesium. The reagents aren't available yet. Phosphate yeah. testing every day is no bad thing, nitrate, same calcium bit over the top magnesium yeah. i don't want to test magnesium every day no, <laughs> but i think they're gonna update it so it um it can test less frequently anyway uh just that was interesting and someone asked and i'd wondered the same thing and that's what happens but that's when you get like when i got an alkalinity test though, it was really i set it to test every hour as well yeah. it's really interesting to see what it does and wow. yeah and I, alkalinity in particular that goes that's all over the place <laughs> alkalinity is most interesting when you change something because you go mm. if you increase your lights you're like your lights up or whatever uh, yeah has, has the alkalinity gone up or down because that tells you whether you're doing the right thing or not yeah completely yeah yeah it's that's really useful a couple of times i've changed my lights having that on hand to test every hour is brilliant yeah because that because you obviously if like if you I, when last time i changed my lights um i turned the new ones down a lot because you don't want to shock your cars with too much light. Yeah. But that means that you're likely to use less calcium and alkalinity. So I set my doser to dose less calcium and alkalinity. Yeah. Anticipating that. And this time I got it right. The time before that, I didn't get it right. I dialed, I dialed the, the dosing down, but not enough. And so my alk shot up. And yeah. But, but, uh, it, but testing the things really that people don't think about when they make those changes. Everything no, is connected. <laughs> and even if you do, if you just test manually, you're not going to test every hour. <laughs> yeah, no, maybe true. maybe you will if you set aside a Saturday or whatever and you're really diligent. But, um, but yeah, it's yeah testing when you're making big changes. Testing everything is whether you do it with a, a Salafat test kit or whatever is really insightful. Gives you it tells you what's happening. Oh, it's like really interesting every day. It'd be really heartbreaking. I think more than more than insightful. <laughs> yeah, that's the trouble. I, I I've gone through spells when I've tried to test phosphate every day. I've I've gone. You know what? For two weeks, I'm going to test every day. Yeah. And then, like, and that starts on the Monday. Yeah. And on Tuesday, I'm like, oh, God. I can't <laughs> this is my this. second one. <laughs> yeah. I, I've probably got three or four days in. And then I'm like, oh, you know what? It's just too much. I actually, the, 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 with regards to automatic testing, I think so. Alkalinity 
I would say is none of the testing is, is that accurate, but that gives you a, a, a trend, which is very useful. And phosphate mm -hmm. seems to be another one that people really struggle with. So yeah. I think that could be very useful. Like I would say probably like half of my consultations are people going, I've tried everything. I can't get my phosphate and I can't get my nitrate down. Well, that, that's the thing. So the, 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 an automatic tester that tests phosphate regularly doesn't do anything you can't do with a 10 quid sample yeah, yeah. test. Kit. Yeah, true. Or the ELOS, the ELOS high range is a really good one. It's yeah. a little bit more expensive, but it's like 15 quid. That's really good. But just testing, I've had this, I've had high phosphate for ages and I, I, I test every week yeah. and, I, and then I replace some rare phosphate and all that sort of stuff. But you just get, you get you get distracted then like you've got other things going on in your life or the tank or whatever but having something that tests every day yeah and then you're like oh i can see this it's going up right let's put some more rail fossil in it does make it very easy but there was i'm gonna pull up steve webb's comment he said i got halfway through that review video yeah. and stopped first things first that's bad for the algorithm <laughs> so what yeah. you want to do is you want to you want to get halfway through the video decide you don't want to watch it set your phone down and just let it play in the yeah. background <laughs> And then get to the end <laughs> and then stop. But he says, uh, I got halfway through the video and stopped as I thought there's no way I'm spending 600 quid to test one parameter. And that was, that was basically my conclusion. It's 600 quid is a lot of money yeah. for when you can get more for not much more. But that was everybody said basically in the comments. That was the one comment that came through. Yeah. And I think that what that says is they've probably, I, I actually don't think it should be cheaper. Because I think yeah. if they made it cheaper, it would be worse. They'd have to use worse components or whatever. But I think it should be able to test two two uh, parameters. And if you, because really, if I want to test my, pho it's been brilliant having regular phosphate results. But I'd like to know what my nitrate is doing as well, because they they're both they're both related. Yeah. So like it's all it's great having nice low phosphate. But if my nitrate has gone sky high or d down to zero, I don't want that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So really, I I'd like both. I think that is for, for you and even for me to some extent in fact for lots and lots of people um phosphate is one is a long term struggle for lots and lots of people mm. and i think that the fact that it tests it every day tells you instantly if you're doing the right thing because the problem that people have with phosphate is they're not testing it enough to see if it's working going up yeah, and down yeah 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 Whereas, so I actually think that that is the sort of thing that, because it gives you instant gratification. You put the Rafos in and then you can see the next day or the next test that it's actually done something. But that, the one thing I did find was I was expecting it to be like Rafos in and then I can see. But what I found was that you really, you need to put Rafos in, then yeah. wait a week and then Sorry. put a bit more in and wait a week yeah. because it does jump around a little bit, not much, but it does jump yeah. around a little bit. So um and there were and maybe they were false results but there were a couple of times when it dropped uh, a little bit and came back up again so um but it but it's, it's it's great as long as you don't like instantly react to it and in theory with this thing you can set it so it will dose liquid phosphate or liquid phosphate remover yeah but i say in theory because there's that's a that's a delicate balance and like it's not well, like imagine if you had that that weird testing thing and it went oh yeah i'm just gonna put some more in yeah exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. This is very true. But so um, that's why I'd never ever trust any um I'll trust a dosing pump, but I won't trust an automated tester to yeah. then dose after it's done a test. Completely. Especially when it's when it's something like without the alkalinity ones, I all I still want to control alkalinity myself because it's so easy. If you've yeah. got an alkalinity tester and it tells you your your alkali is too high, you open your app, you adjust the amount you're dosing down a bit, and it's done. Yeah. So that's that's the really easy part. That part I don't need to automate. That's fine. It's the testing that's the pain in the ass. Yes, yeah. <laughs> but some people I saw, particularly with the Alcatronic, the Focustronic, the, the orange and white one, people had like posted when that came out. Constantly on Facebook, people were posting these graphs of really flat uh, flat alkalinity. Yeah, and I, I've I've not been paying attention to it now, but it was it. To be fair, it is impressive that you can get it dialed in, so it's dead straight. I just I'm not interested enough to do it, but. Anyway, yeah. um, what else have you been up to? Anything else interesting going on with you? Nothing, nothing fish related, if I'm honest. I think, no, I think, I think it was literally just catching the fish. I think for me this the week, whole week, catching the, the whole fish. week. I had loads of orders going out because remember the week before I had a, uh, I, I had no heat packs. Oh, you had, so, yeah, so, yeah, that's been sorted now. Yeah, yes, well. all sorted. But so there was a, a huge backlog. <laughs> okay. That, the people at the post office were like, ah. Oh, 
why have you done this to us? <laughs> because obviously when I go in and I've got like 20 boxes, it's like the people behind me just have to wait. So they have to scan every box or something? Every box gets like, go, gets weighed and scanned and, and sticker goes on. So you don't like buy the postage online. You go in and get them to do Oh, wow. And it's recorded delivery, so they've got to do the whole process. Yep. I'm too You're lazy one of to those people. do it myself. Oh, I, to be fair, I do go at like the, the times when other people aren't there generally. So right. every so often someone gets caught behind me and I'm just like, sucks to be you. <laughs> <laughs> so should have come in earlier. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Might as well uh, come back to my mate. There, it's funny. There's a guy at the post office now who, when he, when he sees me, he's happy because he's coming from work to do his work post. And then when he sees I'm in front of him, he's like, I've got half an hour off now. <laughs> Happy days. He's, he's like, do you want to go in front, mate? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And then he gets back and he goes to his boss. Oh, bloody Ryan was there. God, yeah, oh, he, nightmare. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, uh, what was I going to say? So, so a couple of things that, that I've been up to. So this tank here, the Cade, the little Nano. Uh, nano, 120 litres roughly. Do you think that's a Nano? You do, because anything less than six litres is a Nano. Any, yes, true. Anyway, uh, I've got um, I've changed the lights over. I bought the uh, Kessel ages ago, or a couple of weeks ago. I've, just, I've switched over this time around, this weekend, um, and it's off at the moment because I'm I'm building up slowly. Because it's, anyway, uh, but I've got some some patches of cyanobacteria, which is really annoying. Uh, it's been a bit of a mess for a, a couple of weeks. I finally got around to attacking it. Yeah. Um, just did a big water change, siphoned a load of it out, and I'm I'm halfway there. I've been adding a bit of nitrate because my nitrate bottomed out as well, but. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, this and this was <laughs> so I'd said a couple of times before over the last couple of weeks, I've started using Reefs Elements pH plus, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'd started dosing it very slowly, but I'd not really been paying much attention to it. Alkalinity hadn't gone up. My alkali is back up now. It's about seven, whereas it was at yeah. four before, whatever. Um, but what I, I noticed last weekend, no, after la like last week on a, like a Tuesday night or something, that where the dosing outlet is in the sump, there's this like white crust, like this white lump of like snow. It looked like yeah, snow yeah. that just settled at the bottom. And like the thing says that you've got to add it to a high flow area of your sump. Yeah. Now I'm never going to use the expression high flow area of your sump ever again, because I put it in what is the highest flow area of my sump, which is, for most sumps it's the bit where your water drops from into your return pump section. So there's a little waterfall. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's some flow. That is not a high flow area of your sump. What oh, I'm going to say from now on is you need to create a high flow area in your sump. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. sump's I'd put, just... I'd put it on. directly in front of the return pump. It's same story. It's it's too it's oh, too it's... gentle. And it's, in fact, it, so I I did I put it in two places. Yeah. And I, I, uh, for just a second, I just tried to move it to a high flow area. And it actually, it was right by the return pump. So there was this little lump of snow by yeah. the return pump. And this is this is moving on, getting ahead of ourselves. This is... The point of the, the the point of this uh, stream today is to talk about our most stupid mistakes, basically. Yeah. And I, I saw this patch of snow at the bottom, and I was like, "Oh right, that must have been. It must be where it precipitates. So it just because yeah. it's not dosed into a high flow area, it just doesn't. It just di doesn't dissolve. It just sits there. And so I was like, "Well, let's see if I can pull it out if it's like a crust." But instead of just reaching in and doing that, I, I did. I waved my hand at it to like create a current, and yeah. it all just went woof puffed into the air and then went into the return pump and i was like i was and so basically i said so that was like dosing a week's worth of ph increasing alkalinity buffer in the space of five seconds <laughs> so it really even though it was in the water yeah, it, just, it just it just wasn't dissolving it, that is weird it was sat there it wasn't hot i expected it to be hard crusty so i could like yeah, pick yeah. it up but it was just i don't know it was just it was just sat there like it, it was this white crust but it went it all went into my tank and i suddenly thought that's uh, probably oh. going to be okay. Yeah, and but was given it? it? It's it's the pH plus stuff, so it's quite spicy. So I did a, uh, I mixed up as much water I could, as I could. I did a thirty three liter water change on a so what like a twenty five percent water change, um, and it was absolutely fine. Nothing happened. Um, my alkalinity went up from five to seven. <laughs> um, oh, so it, so it really was like dosing it all in one go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it it, oh. it, it definitely did. It had an impact on the the numbers. That's the dangerous. Was, I know. That's a big. Like, that's well, a it's, it's big only, there's only LPS and GSP in there. Yeah, no, I know that, but I'm just saying if, if that was this, if that similar thing had happened, but on your SPS tank, mm. 
it could have been oh, yeah. like very 100%. serious. I'd have lost half a dozen colonies, or yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was worried. I was like, oh god. But it was, it was, and I was thinking, like, I was going back to your uh, live stream that we did last week when you were talking about adding vinegar to bring pH down. All that. Oh yeah. I you didn't have any way of measuring pH, and I was like, oh, it's probably not going to have done that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it was so yeah. stupid because it was like th there was there was no way, like, if by by waving my hand at it and creating a current. Yeah. All that was ever going to do <laughs> yes. was stir it up. So as yeah. soon as I'd done it, I was like, why the hell did I do that? If I was that con convinced, I should turn the return pump off and suck it out on a water change or something, yeah. right? So stupid. I'm I'm um, surprised that it I'm surprised that it just it sat there and didn't affect the chemistry of the tank, even though it was still in the really water. Do you see what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. And it was only when it was actually mixed in that it did affect the chemistry. Yeah, yeah. It must very locally it must have increased the pH and everything. Yeah. But, but yeah, it didn't at all. And now and then but now it's doing all right. And I but so what I've done now is I put a Nero, I've got a spare Nero three. Yeah. I put a power head in the sump. It's only a yeah. small sump. And it's at 50%. And I it's quite difficult to see the sump, but I'm pretty sure it's not settling now. So I think that <laughs> is so I've created a high flow area in the sump. I'm never gonna say dose this to a high flow over the sump, create a, a high flow area to yeah. dose it into. Does and it's it the same with calc in my, in my calc tank, I've got a power head blasting at the, the calc for the same reason. Does, does it go crusty on where it comes out of the dosing pump? No, uh, not at the moment, but it's only been a couple of weeks. Because even with normal that. dosing does that. Yeah, so. yeah, like this white, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Complete. And sometimes it can block the tube if, if yeah. you leave it long enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> seven months that's... eight months <laughs> <laughs> exactly so i'm gonna do a video like that's called something like the seven things i hate about calquasa just yeah because i've always talked about how good it is people should also know like the things that suck and one of the worst things is that the you, the end of your, your your outlet does crust up and it's just <laughs> okay. a bit messy and it's like and it's, it, it doesn't crust up over eight months it's like a few weeks or I'm not sending it to you, am I? <laughs> no, it's not that. It's because you said the end of your outlet like, crusts oh, yeah, up. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, how does he not realise what he's saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, uh, yeah. I'm not talking about my penis. <laughs> moving, moving on. Isn't it member question time? It is member question. There, there were no member questions, actually. No member questions. For the first time. I'm going to go back and load it again just to see I wonder, if anyone... I wondered why you kept, were keeping this start going for 40 minutes. <laughs> Uh, do you know what? I I kind of I like I've come to the realization now that I just like it when we just have a chat. Yeah, we do. And it's, I I like the structure still. I want the structure, and I yeah. want to talk about news of the week and talking points and that sort of stuff. But I don't like it when because there are times when I'm trying to push things on. I've yeah. done that when I've been like, right, okay, let's go, okay, now let's move on. And it's like I'm distracted, and I, it's just it's better when we're just having a chat and yeah. 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 Oh, well, it is. You know, I think it is. <laughs> anyway, there, so there were no member questions, but that does pull us on to move us on to the Facebook um, page, Prestige Reef Talk Show Facebook page, which you should, of course, join if you're not already a member. Um, and I posted I, something. You posted a, 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 a. Was it your quarantine tank? Yeah, I posted my quarantine tank. I'm so like that, a. I'm like a number one contributor now. Top contributor, Ryan Marchant. Yeah. Um, so that didn't make the top. Um, I didn't expect I, it to. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, did all right. So I, I go through now and I scroll through and check to see what's it called? It's reach or something like that. Yeah, engagement yeah. or something. It tells you how many people it's shown it to, and there's like fourteen hundred people in the group. So a thousand is very good going. Fifty is bad. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that got to about five hundred. Just a photo of your quarantine tank. Uh, and how's that going, by the way? Is that you've you've got your first fish out? They're yeah, yeah. quarantined. Well, the and there's nothing in. in there at the moment. No, yeah, I've got I've got the yellow the tang, tang majestic. Wing. Sorry, the tang wing, yeah. The yellow tang, oh, majestic just, angel, yeah, yeah. and the assessor in there. And I would like to put um a ras in there as well, which I said earlier, just because then it covers pests and it covers algae. Because obviously the more fish you put in, and if I start putting more corals in, higher probability of something going in, basically. So yeah. I like to get things covered first before I they they go in and then get out of control. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's good. So when you've been in the hobby as long as you have, it's easy to be patient. Yeah, that that's the thing because quarantine takes a month. I have to plan yeah. a month in advance, and you can only do a, so many fish at a time. So if I just went, oh, I'm just going to put the tang in, and I'm going to put the angel in. And I don't put a ras in. I then got to wait two months before I can put a ras in because I have to start the yeah. process again after a month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then after I put the ras in, I'll then put the corals in. 
you see so it's That's like a fun. long process because when you're setting up a tank really you want to put in fish back to back to back to back to back yes and then later down the line every month or so is fine so now it must be quite frustrating that you can't just yes you've got to put in two at a time you know yeah so that it is it, it, it's a pain. my cl a clownfish died I forgot to mention last really? weekend, one of my clownfish died, yeah. So they're, they're, I've had them about, I think, since I started this tank, maybe six months before then, so five or six years maximum. Yeah. And clownfish should live 20, 25 years. As I say, they live, I think the oldest one's like 32 or something. Yeah, and one of them just found one stuck to a power head. No Is sign of disease. It was the small one, so the male. So no she... sign of disease, just... Yeah. Uh, and it didn't, didn't have a sunken belly or anything. It was just dead. It was proper belly. It was the MP40, and yeah. it was stuck deep in it. Yeah. So I did wonder if it had gone up to because sometimes they swim around them. Normally, they mine swim by the zoos. I did wonder if he got sucked in, but it's I almost think... always when that happens, when you find a, a fish stuck to a power head, it's yeah. not the power that's killed it. It's that it's got sucked up to there because it's dead. Yeah, it, yeah. So it's, I don't think that's the case, but I couldn't explain. And I, when that when a clownfish dies, it's like, oh, shit. Does that Something's mean... really wrong. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so, but nothing happened. No other fish died. There's no other signs of disease. I don't think I've introduced a fish for a long time. So, I, I, I actually feel like emotional pain for. I'm genuinely like <laughs> I feel sadness only because, <laughs> like, you had some really really nice clownfish. If someone yeah, said yeah. to me who has the nicest clownfish, I would have said it was you because oh, really? I really like. I really genuinely yeah, yeah, yeah. really like them. Yeah. Uh, I like the patterns on them. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, they would be cool, and and now it means that Mrs. Clownfish is on her own. Yeah. So it? yeah, but it just just I forgot to mention it last weekend, but just randomly died, and it's like oh, like if a rast rast supposedly live for uh, about seven years, how, depending on what type of rast, but Halicorys rast. Well, they yellow so, chorus rats. That's the one. Yellow <laughs> chorus rats live for about seven eight years, apparently. Yeah. It's hard to find uh, information on life expectancy. So yeah. I, and I, I had a, 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 what was it called? A, a Midas Blenny that died a couple of years ago. And I'd had it for about three years. And supposedly three to five years is about right for them. Um, and th even then that's sad. But for a clownfish, it's like, why has he died? Yeah, because if you think about it, it can be um, like, it can be a disease. It could be a nutritional deficiency. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it can be old age. Uh, yeah, yeah. But... I can't see it being. Wait. It's not. It, I mean, clownfish are rock solid, and you can yeah, feed as not, much or as little yeah. as you want, and you know. It's odd. It's weird. Very weird. I don't. And there was there was something that killed it. It's not, it didn't just die for no reason. Probably BRS the, always say this. Don't probably they? the female killed it. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I just got pissed off with him. Yeah, she had enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I don't know. It's weird. We've all yeah. been there. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um. But there we go. Anyway, so yes, yeah, so that died, which was sad. So now I've got one one clownfish. I do feel this is the reef in God telling me that I need to shut my tank down. Yeah, and restart it with a much bigger one. Yeah, I agree. Good point. Um, anyway, Facebook page. <laughs> so there, the two thing, the two most popular posts I pulled up, and what I realised was that trusting the YouTube, the YouTube, the Facebook algorithm, yeah, uh, to, to to tell me what um, photos I'm going to pull up or whatever is problematic because things like this happen. So this is uh, top contributor Bruce King's tank. Yeah. And we've seen this before because it got uh, really good engagement last time. <laughs> okay. And now Bruce is going to post a photo every week. <laughs> and then he's going to be on. Yeah, I see <laughs> And everyone's going to watch it. But yeah, yeah. But it's, it's a nice tank. This is, I can't remember the dimensions, but this is, I think this is three feet front to back. And like it's more than two feet tall. It, it doesn't look like a big tank you until you see some of the fish. You yeah, yeah, yeah. that candy cane, don't you? At the bottom, bright, it? Yeah. Do you know what? So I got, I bought a candy cane because it's so bright, and for my K tank, it's yeah. so. In fact, it's the one fish that you, fish, one coral that you can see in my tank because it's so bright. Apart from the little GSP. yeah, yeah, I can see. Yeah. Um, but there we go. So that's that's Bruce's tank, nicely grown out tank, big old hammers or whatever they are down there. Loads of LPS. What's that? Pectinia. I, can't I was going to say it looks like a pectinia or some sort of chalice. Lots of LPS, torches and all that stuff, and loads of acros, nice big tabling acro, and loads of fish. I've just realized you've got like a million chromis. Anyway, and that's a, tr a trigger fish as well. Cool. Anyway, that's the first Looks thing. Like a chromis from here. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 can say, I can see what you mean. It is a trigger, but yeah. when I first saw it, I thought it was a big chromis. And the second one, and the most popular one, and this was the, the is thing. Is this one I commented you, on? <laughs> it is exactly that. 
and this was brilliant. So this is yeah. I, I'm going to have to describe this for the um, for the benefit of the podcast. But is this? It, and you might have seen it before. It's just a, like a meme. Facebook guy, Facebook's guide to reef pests version two point three, and it's six pictures. The top one is a feather duster, and it says definitely aptasia. The second one is algae of some kind, definitely aptasia. <laughs> Third one is cyanobacteria, it says definitely aptasia. Fourth one is a clownfish, definitely aptasia. Fifth one is a plate of spaghetti, definitely <laughs> aptasia. Yeah. And then the sixth photo is aptasia. Not sure, maybe Xenia. <laughs> yes. The funny thing is, I've I'm pretty sure I've seen that last one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah. Like, that looks like Xenia. <laughs> it's funny. But, but that's it does make a point that uh, so for a start. I ask him to for Aptasia to be identified is like the most common question on uh, on, yeah. on Facebook. Um, but it, like people, it's so difficult. You were talking the other week about that weird coral, and some people were absolutely adamant it was a pavona yeah. or whatever. And it a lot of the time on on the groups that you see, people like BRS get this all the time. People post something that looks a little bit unusual, and yeah. people are adamant. The people who are, are normally right are the ones who are like, it looks like this, but you should try Googling it to see if it matches up to what, you yeah, know, yeah. a bit more circumspect. But yeah. anyway, um, but that was funny. That was a funny picture. I liked it. Yeah, I liked I actually commented on it and saying this better be the, the number one, number one was, post. It was the most, it, engagement was like just over a thousand. So for me to comment most... on something as well, I don't comment <laughs> no, on anything yeah. really. It's so funny. for me to comment on something, I was like, yep, I'm getting the engagement up. <laughs> mm. But so, it was good. It uh, I was going to go back to uh, to a couple of questions on uh, pH plus. Uh, does it dose tin? I don't know. It does dose um, uh, trace elements. Um, so maybe tins in there. I've got no idea. Um, but if you've got a tin problem, it's probably not um, the, the, that stuff. If that's the question you're asking. And then someone else said they've got the same issue with uh, reef sediments pH plus. Keep me into add a small power head in the sump where I dose it. I think you've got to do that if you're dosing the stuff. When you do it, it's fine. But you can't because who's got a, a high flow sump? It's really still, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. All I was thinking if there's anywhere else you could dose it, if you could dose it anywhere else which didn't require a power head. The only other place, yeah. and this is, I can't, do, I've thought about doing it on this tank, is the, the, the overflow box. You yeah, dose the it box, into yeah. that. Exactly. That's what I was thinking. So so on my water box, that's where I dose my calcwasa. So it then goes instantly crashing down three yeah. feet of pipe. Yeah. And that's the fastest flow area possible. Yeah. That's the only place that is a high flow area, I would say. Yeah, that's that's what I was I was wondering if, if that yeah. was yeah. So that's the yeah, yeah. Good great minds think alike. Um no, could no, the no, clown average have... minds think alike is I think <laughs> yes, the right so <laughs> Could the clown have died from a bacterial infection? It didn't look like it had a bacterial infection, but if you if you've got a, a clown a clownfish a fish with a bacterial infection, they look knackered. This just looked completely normal. Um, but I've got no idea. It was just difficult to um, difficult to know. Uh, anyway, so that's the uh, the Facebook group. You're looking you at the, the angel was, fish. I was looking. At, I was like, oh yeah, I'm, oh yeah, I'm going. Thing I'm thinking though. <laughs> you're thinking it's not going to be the one we want. No, it's going to be the, the standard swallowtail, not the Japanese. Yeah, people yeah, message yeah, yeah. me all the time, literally <laughs> all the time, going, I've, I've, I've met this shop and they've got one of those angelfish you want. I'm like, no, that's yeah, not the one I want. Not... It's a Japanese one. <laughs> Firstly, thank you, Aquatic Interest. But I, I put out a video ages ago where I specifically said, if you see one of these, I want one. Yeah, but you want and the got... female, don't you? Yeah, but either way, I, 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 I got a couple yeah. of people telling me and they were adamant. And I, there was one time I phoned up the shop. I was like, I hear you've got a swallowtail angel. Yeah. Is it the Japanese one? They're like, no. I was like, ah, oh, yeah. gutted. That happens to me about black tangs as well. And it's always the black <laughs> tang, the, the black tang that's at Farnham. You know, Maidenhead Farnham? It, so it's actually, that was, the, that was the most popular, one of the most popular photos from the Facebook page this week where someone posted the in inverted commas black tang. It's actually a Sohal tang, I think. Uh, what was it? No, it's the it's is a hybrid between a scopus and a scopus. Black. Sorry, scopus. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's so I called them up and I was like, "Look, it's going to take me a while to get here. Is it definitely a black tang?" And they went, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." So when I got there, I was like, "This is not a black tang." Didn't they <laughs> and then, then he, say, "Yeah, we know." <laughs> and yeah, then they went, "Yeah, we know." And I was like, "They've had it there for years." I wish yeah, someone yeah. would buy it because then people will stop emailing me about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, someone someone posted a photo of it on the Facebook group. It was a really popular post. Yeah. 
but it was it was it was under blue lights and it was a black fish so you couldn't really see it so i didn't bother sharing it doesn't it. And have it's a not... long nose no it's but it's, it's... Have a long yeah. nose exactly but anyway um well they want the, they want the same price for a, for a black tang for it for how much is it i, I can't remember it's a long time ago now so it, around that between 900 and 1200 i reckon something like that to be fair well I, so i phoned you once and i saw it in there <laughs> And I was like, I think I've just seen a black tang. And you were like, is it in Maidenhead Borden? <laughs> yeah, that's the one, like, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I said Farnham, I must... I think, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, Farnham and Borden. It's oh. the same thing, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but yeah. Actually, there I remember you. that phone call. I do. Oh, yeah, you did call yeah. me once. I actually went back in to get a video of it to send it to you. <laughs> anyway, if going back to our thing, we both want a, a Japanese swallow-tailed angelfish. <laughs> if you are 100% sure it's a Japanese swallow-tailed angelfish, Give me a call before Alex, <laughs> because, oh, Alex is... because if it's a male and a female, I'll buy both of them just so he can't have it. <laughs> you bastard. Right. I don't even want the female. The fi- I don't even sure why you want the female. I, partly, I don't like big fish, as we know. Yeah. And the female's smaller. And I just think it, I think they look The cooler. male looks way better. It's got like stripes on it. <laughs> Yeah, okay good that's a fair <laughs> argument but uh but no i uh whatever i the idea would be that can we, we get, get a, a picture up? i think we should get a picture up so that we so that people can vote which is the better looking one japanese i'm pretty sure we've done this uh before swallow i don't know if we've i don't know if we've done the uh i think we have yeah. i think we've done the, the the poll before have we uh oh that's annoying i thought like, oh, that looks like a nice female doesn't it oh look at but there you go. So uh, there you go. Uh, left, more... go left. Yeah, that's the one I want. Yeah, that's that's the that's a really good picture of, of the one you like. It's it's like a, it's almost the per, it's like the uh, the king eye angel, except the king eye has got that's like true. tiger stripes, and, it and this one's got more like zebra stripes, and that's why I want it. <laughs> yeah. To be yeah, to be fair, it's not going to happen because uh, they never come into the hobby. Last time I saw one was five years ago. <laughs> yeah. So we probably saw the same one. <laughs> Yeah, indeed. Um, anyway, uh, right. So that is Facebook page done, which means we are on to the Prestige Reef Fish of the Week. Oh, wait, there's, there's no, I was like, I was waiting for the uh, for the like the news the music, jingle. and then I realized. That oh we yeah, yeah. No, no. We, we'll come on to that. I was gonna. I keep meaning. I've made a note to myself to make a jingle for the Prestige Reef Fish of the Week. Oh, do really? I, keep, I keep I keep forgetting to do it. Anyway. That's right. I wouldn't worry. Um, so right, so the Prezi Reef fish of the week this week is a Caribbean blue tang. So you asked me to do to do a well, you always you always complain and I always do these weird expensive fish. This is not a weird expensive fish. This is one of my favorite fish. That is not a great picture of it, if I'm honest. When you see ah, them I'm just I'm just being honest. So critical. When you see they're like a really vibrant blue sometimes. Oh, that, and is that better? Mm, close enough. Um, <laughs> it's uh, they they start off as uh, yellow. So the yellow fish you see on the screen at the moment is also a Caribbean B and blue tang. Yeah, okay, that looks and like then, a, oh this one. Yes, yeah, so the so there's there's two, three yellow fish there, isn't there? I can't see yeah. where your mouth is, but yeah. So yeah, that that's a juvenile. Um, you and then the as they get older, they turn blue. What's interesting, however, is that sometimes you get massive yellow ones. And sometimes oh, you get really? tiny blue ones. <laughs> so so I, I don't know what the diff, what causes the change of color because it's not the size, and I'm assuming it's not the age either. But if it's based on on that, but something um, obviously causes them to change. The other thing I noticed is that when in captivity, they are are less likely to change color than other tangs. So <laughs> chevron tangs almost always change. So if you get a juvenile chevron, you know, like the really cool, nice yeah, one. Yeah, they look cool when they're young. Don't they? yeah. And then as they get older, they turn and they, they turn like a that black color pretty quickly. Whereas these, I think I had my one for seven years, did not change color, just stayed yellow. <laughs> and the thing was, I got it so it would be blue. <laughs> so if you, what I'm trying to say is if you like the yellow ones, get a yellow one. If you like the blue ones, get the blue ones. Yeah. The, uh, to be fair, I think the yellow when it when it's yellow, it looks quite cool. I don't like it when it's blue, and especially if you like uh, if uh, when your lights go blue, it's just that's, be that's what it looks like in Jamie's tank. And also, they had oh, one okay. at, they had one at London Aquarium. I uh, know London. I Zoo. like the patterns. I'd say the stripy bits. 
it, it's it looks like those, a fingerprint. I don't know what it is, but I, sometimes you'll see a fish and you'll go and if somewhere in an aquarium or something, and then it sticks with you when you see like a big adult one. Uh, and I saw one of these at London Zoo, and and from that moment on, I was like, I want one of those fish. Yeah, okay, that's cool. So they're acanthus, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah acanthus curry, curry. They're something. easier than they some get... of the other uh, acanthus tanks. That must mean they get big, though. They do get big. Jamie's ones like like this is like the biggest size of tank you. in his tank. Yeah, head. Yeah. Uh, all right. So that is the the Prestige Reef fish of the week, uh, which is which was not designed to wind me up. <laughs> However, the same cannot be said of the Prestige Reef Cur of the Week. Ryan, enlighten us. I'm I'm disappointed that I told you before the stream what the yeah, Cur yeah, of the yeah. Week was going to be because you won't have the same idea. reaction. <laughs> um, but so the, this week I've decided the Prestige Reef Cur of the Week is a sunset Montpora. <laughs> um, and that's because uh, Alex and I have a difference of opinions with regards to the color of this coral. I think it's <laughs> orange with green polyps. And what do you think, Alex? I think it's purple and blue. So, no. Um, I, so I didn't realize that's what you're talking about. It, it, it is orange. It's it's orangey red, but it is probably, it's more orange. But this is, the reason I hate it. Orangey red. It. It's kind of, it's, it is orange. Anyway, the reason, the reason I thought you'd bring it up was because this thing has taken over my tank. Oh, no, I didn't know that. I literally did this to annoy this you. Is, this is a video. Uh, yeah, this is my video. <laughs> this is my Sunset Monty. Wow. And the thing... That's it's about two feet long. That must be the back of the tank. It is. I never see it, and it's, so it's yeah. really difficult to get this video. But the thing is, it's it's a monster. Is that it is. like it's an impressive coral to have one yeah. that big? But like, so who was it? Someone commented. Uh, here we go. It was inappropriate reef. In fact, it said though I see that you have lost the battle. It is gorgeous, and that's exactly right. It's a cool coral, but I've yeah. lost the battle, <laughs> well and truly. Yeah, um, there's, there's literally nothing you can do about that now. No, it's it's cut like I could pull out some bits, but I've got no chance. See that there you go. That looks quite red. No, it looks orange. <laughs> but then yeah, that is orange. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, Sunset Monty, nice coral, really nice coral. Yeah, yeah actually, it's, there's lots of um, Montes which are uh, the encrusting Montes, which are they're, they're easy. Uh, so they're a pretty beginner SPS, and and you see what they do where they grow nicely, um, mm. as long as you don't let them get out of control. But <laughs> they only get out of control in your tank. These corals, I don't think for the most people they get out of control. Would you agree? Like I don't um, want people to not buy this because they're fearful it's going to do that to their tank. Because the, the, the answer is so because I've got encrusting cyphastria as well. Yeah, and the uh, but but when I put when I bought them, I put them on little zoa rocks. And that's yeah. the answer. That's little coral islands. Isolate them, and then it yeah. doesn't matter. And actually, this—that's what I did with the Sunset Monty. That's what I did. I, I bought a, a piece of live rock, put a couple of tiny frags of Sunset Monty on it, and it was supposed to be isolated. It's just I got it's lazy not. and I didn't—I didn't move it. Yeah. And then it just stayed and spilled onto the rock. But if you can isolate it, they're, they're awesome, and it, it's a lovely coral. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's taken over half my tank, so I don't like it. I just, <laughs> but that's I the same we, with any coral. I think we give. Um... Uh, some of these encrusting monsters like Tropic Thunder are a bad name, but they're not. It's not like it's Xenia. It's not the same. No, it's worse. <laughs> not worse. <laughs> uh, no, I uh, no. It's no. It's not. It's not as invasive as Xenia. I'll give you that. That's yeah. all I'll say about it. No. Um, all right. Well, so that is the uh, the Prestige Reef Fish and Car of the Week, which means we're now on to news. <laughs> And I've got to disappoint you straight away because last there's no product as ridiculous as the contactless heater that we had last week. Yeah, shame. Which is shame. a real... Um, but there is uh, some news on update. Have you ever had any Reef Octopus products? Skimmers no. and pumps? No. no. I know I know what they are, but I've never, never had them. I think, I think they're, they're a good brand. They're, they're one of those... It's funny. They're one of the brands that whenever I'm looking at a, a return pump, they're yeah. always high on the list, but I never yeah. buy them. I can't really tell you why, but they but they they're going wireless, so they're going to be bringing out a range of Wi-Fi, uh, uh, well, boxes for their all their uh, controllers. So presumably that means they'll have an app. Is it going to be contactless? Um, no, it's not going to be contactless. It's not, if it's not contactless, I'm not interested. I'm not interested. Yeah, sorry. Um, but you can like with 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 powerheads, 
it's probably worth having an app to be fair because you do need to set them up yeah. but with a return pump i'm kind of torn because my return pump's got an app um and it's not really i don't it's not really that useful you don't like, when you set up for most of these things after you've set no. them up and even like so the thing is so the jacod return pumps for me are perfect because they've got a box and the box has got three buttons on it yeah. more power less power feed mode and that's it and so you can set it to 50 percent, 75 percent, or whatever and that's all you need with a return pump and i love a physical button to, to press pause yeah because then it just if you want to take photos like i take photos and videos all the time just press pause or if you want to feed um reef energy or whatever you press pause and it's it stopped up so that's all you need um but it's probably worthwhile having uh, a, a, an app because it does make stuff easy but for a return pump mm, not yeah, really well, useful, is I, it? I'll, no. Well, I think I people expect, expect it, but yeah, I think people expect it these days more than anything yeah. else. I I, I, I set up my um, Vectrail ones and then haven't changed them since I yeah, which is the way it should three be. years. So, funnily enough, actually, the Jackod I've got Jackod I've got a refactory one on my main tank, and yeah. that is app controlled, and I've got two Jackod uh, return pumps on my other two tanks. They are both Wi-Fi. They're app controlled as well. But I could yeah. never get the app to work. Yeah. And so I've never been able to set it up. Yeah. Um, but even if I did have it, I don't think I'd use the app because I just love the button. It's great. I think the only thing that I find really useful for that has an app is dosing pumps. Because then yeah. it really is so easy. You just to, yeah, yeah. Just put oh, up and down. You don't I change have... you don't change the temperature that often. You don't you don't no. I mean, look, don't get wrong. For, for looking at temperature test... alerts are useful for yeah. App. Yeah. With temperature control, I used to have when I my first ever um, dosing pumps. I had a TMC one that broke. It, they said I think four of them broke in a row, so I got rid of that. And yeah. then I had a um, a Kamoa one, and it was this was before Kamoa linked up with DD. Yeah, and because I think DD do the software quite well, but it was just a, a solid Kamoa X4 Wi-Fi. It was called, and it was Wi-Fi controlled, but the app was awful, and the way like all the wording in the app. It would like say when you connect to it, it would say connect success. And you're like, what? And like none of it really made sense. And yeah, changing yeah. the dosing amounts was really awkward. But it was a step up from having to go over and that's what I had. Go into each dosing pump up, 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 up. Look at you, look, look at you there, moaning. There. You're moaning <laughs> I'm like, I had to go press a button. <laughs> exactly. But now having a um but having a, a, a dosing pump where you can just log on to the app, 100 milliliters, change it to 110 or whatever. It's yeah. Wicked. Yeah, yeah. Really good. Um, not going to do that yeah. with a return pump, though. No, no, that's the thing. It's it's not really necessary. Powerheads definitely is necessary. But anyway, that's um, that's uh, uh, an addition to Reef Octopus. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if that does stop quite a lot of people from buying Reef Octopus stuff because it's like, ah, yeah, you need an app, though, don't you? So um, they already, I think they're good, reliable, like good reputation. So now they've got that as well. Maybe that'd be useful. Sorry? Sorry? If it told you when your skimmer was full, that'd be useful. Yeah, yeah. But I'd just be like, yeah, well, I'm not going to change it, mate. <laughs> I'll do it next week. But yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, next thing. Okay, so there are a couple of things. Ah, yeah, first off. So there's a, um, we have a, a new rival podcast, Ryan. Oh, do we? So the Prestige Reef Talk Show is currently the most downloaded podcast in Saltwater Aquariums. Is it? <laughs> uh, probably not, to be fair. I made that up. I've got no okay. idea. <laughs> okay, yeah. Different. Um, in, the, in the world yeah in the world um, i've got no idea there's there's no stats like on youtube you can go and see how many views a, a video's got yeah. and in podcasts you don't get the same publicly available data yeah. but anyway um so but there's another what there's another podcast if you like podcasts uh do you know adam from frag garage who's been on yeah. beef dudes a couple of times canadian guy um really interesting bloke uh, he started a podcast uh where he got guests on all week uh, every week sorry um yeah downside is it's not a video podcast i really like the video podcasts so you can watch it on youtube and listen to it in the background if you want it's you like just... looking at my face don't you exactly I just for two like hours face. once a week you like looking yeah. at my face i like wake up in the morning like first thing i do is put uh put your face on my screen so um but it is it, it's being uploaded to uh youtube but there's no video it's just audio but if you want an audio only podcast check out uh i can't oh, what's it called are you trying to get invited as on as a guest he takes on serious guests, Ryan. We've oh, discussed so this before. Yeah. You and I don't get invited. We don't ever get invited onto other podcasts. I've noticed no. this. 
because, but that's that's not a bad thing. Um, but it's called Beyond the Reef. Beyond the Reef. Uh, so yeah, it, it will be soon be the second best podcast in reefing well, behind Reef Bump. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, and new coral. So a new coral has been discovered. Uh, in it's not really a new coral. This is going to be something weird, probably. If whenever so, there's a new coral discovered, it's usually like it's usually like some deep water weird thing. Oh well, I've I've, I've phrased that badly because it's okay. been discovered in it's a, it's not a new coral. It's been discovered in a new location. Okay. So it's a a dendronephthia. Do you know what dendronephthia is? No. Good because I didn't recognise it, but it's just it looks like a, a miscellaneous soft coral. I was gonna say I know I, I, people refer to a nephthia as a, as a nephthia. soft coral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that does that look familiar? That looks familiar to me. Yeah, it's that oh. looks like the sort of coral that doesn't survive in our tanks very often. Exactly, yeah, <laughs> like non-photosynthetic. Yeah. But it's been discovered in uh, the Eastern Mediterranean in Israel, off the coast of Israel, uh, which and it's this is a, this is normally in the Red Sea, which is a bit further south. And the point they're making is global warming. Uh, exactly right. <laughs> is that what it is? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Well, well, that's what I've always wondered. I even asked Jamie Craggs this once. I said Everyone. to him, if Ooh, if, friend. No, uh, I, I didn't get, I, I, I didn't, I'm not sure my, I got the response I was expecting um, from it, but, but basically I said to him, if some parts of the ocean are getting warmer, that means some of the colder parts should in theory be able to host coral, be, be the home for, for, new, for new coral reefs. You want um, Xenia in the English Channel, don't you? Yeah, no, <laughs> I don't want Xenia anywhere. <laughs> So, but uh, yeah, but no, that's yeah, that's exactly right, and that's what's happening. Well, in theory, that to some extent is bad, but also good because it's like <laughs> at the moment everyone's going, everyone's worried that it will be a total wipeout of all corals. Whereas you've just seen that they're just moving, and it's the same with fish. The fish are also migrating to different areas as well. Basically, so, it doesn't matter that the Great Barrier Reef is dying, is what you're saying, because we've got the English Channel, and that's <laughs> going to be covered in Aquapora in 20 years' time. So, yeah, there you go. That's what I was saying. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much word for word. But I Not just exactly, but yeah. I wonder. I wonder if, <laughs> if like. I'm not sure what I'm trying to say, which is not good for a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if, if like a, an entire reef can do that if you see what i mean all the different species of that reef can go i mean if, or is it just that one coral well on that occasion it was just this one coral they talked about yeah but uh, who knows well we shall see but there you go and the second uh, the sorry there's two more stories uh, one is there's a, a, a group called coral reef protection group and they're pledging to raise um money in order to protect coral reefs of the world Guess how much they they've pledged to raise. This is a shot in the dark. I'm gonna say a million. A million, a lot of money, million pounds, dollars. It doesn't really matter because it's just a stab in the same, dark. So. Call it dollars because dollars, you know, US dollars, million yeah. dollars, a lot of money. I right? reckon it's gonna be loads. It's gonna be more than that actually. Twelve billion dollars. Twelve billion. Twelve billion with a B dollars. That's I almost learned. as much as YouTube pays me to make these podcasts. That's true. That's true. Um, and it's, <laughs> it is the International Coral Reef Initiative. Uh, and apparently this is some global partnership. And it's it, it's a global partnership between nations. These people are geniuses, by the way, because some people just went, we're going to save the corals. What you need to do is give us $12 billion. <laughs> exactly. Um, and it's so it's, it's between nations. So it's it was launched in 1994 by Australia, France, Japan, Jamaica, Philippines, Sweden, Britain, and the United States. A lot of corals in Sweden. Yeah, exactly. A lot of corals in the, in Great Britain. Yeah. Uh, and since then, it's grown, and there are now 45 countries. So this isn't just like a, a little poxy organization. Yeah, this is yeah. like a worldwide thing. But still, I saw that 12 billion. I thought, bloody hell. Um, so it doesn't say how they're going to raise it. <laughs> And you can, I mean, I'd like I would like to own a five million pound house. It's not gonna happen, but it's a nice target. Yeah. Um, but it what they, they they they're gonna um if they do raise this money, they're gonna protect areas and, and replant corals, all these sorts of things. Um, but it was just interesting that there's that there's such a, a hugely ambitious uh I don't know, um project. Yeah. 
does, there's not a lot of substance there. So from what I haven't even looked I into know. it, but from what there you just told me, there's not a lot of substance. It was, it was the headline. It doesn't tell you how they're going to do it, and yeah. doesn't give you specific details and of what they're going to spend on which countries they're going to raise it, how and all that. But the 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 one thing that I do, this is only on, if you think about it, with a very very small scale in comparison to the ocean. I like the hotels, which are. Um, yeah, your mate pilot to pay for it, <laughs> Joe. Um, I like the hotels which are basically creating their own reefs, and the yeah. reason they're doing that is for their guests. So, they it is, it, it's, it's there's an incentive for them to look after the reef and build a reef. Mm. How well it works, I don't know. Um, I've not seen, I've, I've seen people doing it, but. It's not particularly impressive to go and see frags this big if you're, yeah, if you're yeah, exactly. for diving. <laughs> oh, is that a tenuous? <laughs> but those are those will have an impact on the direct coast, if you see what I mean, because the hotel's not going to be doing it 100 miles out or whatever. Although I don't know. What, uh, no, yeah, there are reefs miles out. So, they, yeah, the hotels aren't going to be doing that. But with regards to local places, it will, in theory, make a difference. And mm. whenever there's an incentive for people to do it, which is a financial one that, it usually works <laughs> financial incentive is is you know money makes the world go around right so. yeah i bet that guy who's getting the 12 billion is pushing it hard <laughs> he's yeah. got a lot of motivation uh, could uh, could he buy all of your frags for 12 billion or would oh, you, you know... i would do it for at least like half that for him special mm, mate rates yeah. There you go. Uh, so there you go. You buy. You can buy corals. Um, this coral project from the world's best coral website, and they're hardy because they're acclimated to, you know, uh, home conditions. So there you go. Hook me up. Uh, hit me up, and I'll give you a. a uh, I know that doesn't make any sense. I want a ten percent commission, but um, six hundred million dollars was fine. There you go. I'll do it for around five hundred million. And then the last, <laughs> the last um, bit of news I saw, uh, and this was from our friends over at Reef Builders. Uh, they, oh, actually, that's not. Well, it kind of is from both. This was they're, they're talking about. It's a, an article about a video. Joe you know Richard Ross. I have heard of Richard Ross, and I'd probably recognise him. He he doesn't he, he do the do, aquarium? He does. mm, it's the, uh, the, like massive aquarium. Don't know <laughs> the Georgia the public aquarium. aquarium. I think that he. Don't, maybe, not as far as I'm aware. He, he's, it, so I know him as he does um, he does talks for uh, like Macna and that sort of thing. And he runs yeah. a, a podcast, the third best podcast in the hobby uh, <laughs> called Reef Brief. Yeah. Um, which, uh, and, but he's, he's got this, there's an article on Reef Builders about him or about his project. And he has, uh, he's, he's spawning, he's captive spawning live corals, normal corals. Yeah, like he, no, he is. He works at the Stein, Steinhardt Aquarium. I just Googled it. Oh, really? Cool. There you go. Yeah, they've got a map. I'm, I'm pretty sure they've got this massive display tank, which they then completely emptied and rebuilt. And there's, there's a video of it on YouTube. And that's they had to catch these thousands of fish that's in this ro all this rock work and everything. And obviously, as the water's going down, they're just trying to catch as many fish as they can before the fish suffocate. Right. Okay. You're never going to get all of them out. No. Um, but he's doing this. It's really interesting. There's a video. I'm going to set this to two times speed. Uh, but there's a video. It's there's no. Uh, there's, there's just text. But he's showing you his his setup. And this show he's following the Jamie Craig's method basically. Yeah. So this is Aquaporus spawning. And what it what it shows you, <laughs> fox face eating all the eggs. Is yeah. so he's collecting the the gametes and all that. This shows you that you could do this at home. Yeah, You'd have yeah. to have space and money for the setup. But you could do it and you can breed these corals. So this is when they're this funny, when they're at larvae stage, they got these little hairs on them so they can swim around. Yeah. And then it lands on a frag plug. I was lucky. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And then grows. So this is cool footage. That is amazing, actually. I haven't I've not seen that. I might look into that. And this, yeah, it's a really interesting video. It's well worth a watch. Um, and it just shows sort of the process of the of the the polyps growing and growing. And now you can see it. That's a coral. It's like suddenly it's real that to be fair that is amazing i wonder how hard it is to do i don't I know you... think it's that hard. well it's not like technically difficult yeah. but i think there's a lot of effort like anybody can what i'm saying is anybody can do it yeah it's not like you have to be a genius but i just think it's it takes a lot of effort is what i think I you have like you have to black out all the room and i think you change the light yes. and temperature and Correct. stuff like that yeah 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 and you have to be able to control all of that but yes um but it was a really interesting video and it would be cool to do that yourself, myself. But realistically, it's not going to happen. 
I wonder if you just left all the corals in the tank if you if you then just have loads of corals everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, think yeah. About all yeah. your acros, I think the chance are that most of them probably wouldn't survive. But if you think about all your all those acros in your tank, mm -hmm. imagine them all spawning everywhere yeah, and just yeah, being yeah. left there, and then just like, to see yeah. what what shows up. Be like having again, a tank full of pocky. I was gonna say it does happen. It happens with 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 Priscilla So we say it differently. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure which one of us is right, but no, I, I've got no idea. <laughs> Priscilla. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, so Jamie Craggs would pronounce it Pocillopera. Ah, uh, so both <laughs> he, of them. He, he pronounces it like Montipera and Melia, Meliopera and Acropera. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> Which I'm sure is right. but It, it probably is weird. right. <laughs> it just sounds weird, doesn't it, when you've said it yeah. as Acropora or Montipora. For, for so I'm long, not, yeah. I'm not going to start changing. Um, anyway, so that is that all of the news? Uh, yes, I believe it is. Right, okay, so we can play the outro. <laughs> Normally got the outro lined up, so it was a bit, a bit more. Can ambient. you see me when you play the outro? Yeah, you're rolling your eyes. <laughs> no, I used to do a little dance. Oh, really? I, just, oh, cool. I started it preemptively this time, and I didn't realize I was still on the screen. I started going. I really like that little. <laughs> <laughs> but I found it because I, I used to do. I started doing a, a video once a month years ago on the channel, on the main channel. It yeah. was reefing news. I put my suit on, dressed up like a news presenter. Oh, <laughs> and yeah. I used that as the intro, but like nobody watched it. I said, um, one of those things where it's like funny for you, but not for everyone else. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was probably yes. funny the first time. And then that's <laughs> yeah. it. And then every other week it's like, mate. Um, but I always wanted to do a, a news. So it's really good to, to do it on here. Yeah. Um, anyway, so that is the news, which means we are now on to the headline topic, which is our reefing disaster stories. And this is not just run of the mill. Uh, like my this is stupid things it's got to be it requires us to have done something stupid that we should have known better to do I'm right i know you, you do a lot of stupid things <laughs> where do i start i know um i have well okay let's start with this one i have dropped a tank before yeah. so i was moving i used to buy a lot of tanks <laughs> secondhand um, this is this is a this is a uh, this isn't a big one. This is just a, a starter, ease you in basically. Um, so I used to buy a lot of tanks secondhand, and I said to one of my friends, "What we'll do? I'll take all the stuff out, and you can have the tank for free." Yeah. So and so, when we took all the stuff out, put it put it in my house, then we drove to his house, and it was raining, <laughs> <laughs> and tanks when they're wet are not good. And uh, when we got out of the car, I dropped this i think it was like a four foot tank wow heavy tank. and it, Did it completely yeah, smash <laughs> it didn't completely smash because it was it i dropped it onto grass it did crack it um and he he didn't it didn't particularly matter because he was actually using it for an outdoor pond which is an odd thing to do he had the tank above ground okay. with fish in it <laughs> so okay. it didn't matter that much because he just put a glass panel in yeah. uh, and he got it for free so what what <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say it was going to be intact when I said you got it for free. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's my first thing. I have got a few others, but I'll let we, I'm assuming you've got more than one, have you? Well, so I, I've got a few, but I did think actually that what was going to happen is we'd start talking. I'll start remembering other stupid things I've done. Yeah. And instantly you've reminded me of two stupid things I've done. Yeah. I did. So the most stupid one was I, I had my, I just bought my um, Red Sea Reef for Peninsula 500. So this was winding back five or six years or whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, Spent a lot of money on that tank. It was the most money I'd ever spent on the tank. Um, it was and... the last money you ever spent on a tank, isn't it? Sorry? It was the last money you ever had to spend on a tank, isn't it? Uh, no, I've only ever been given one tank, the Cade. Oh. oh. Uh, I, yeah, I, I, I work for my... Um, for yourself. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, I uh, so I got I got the tank, and I, there's a video about this, and everybody probably knows already, but I got the tank, decided to, to move it on my own. I got a mate to help me move the tank into the house. <laughs> and then once I'd done that, I was like, do you know what? I'm going to set up the cabinet. Um, I'd, I'd set up the cabinet and I was like, well, I want to move the tank into place so it's ready because my mate's going to come back the next day and I can lift it on. So I, I had it. <laughs> yeah. The tank was tall ways. Yeah. So it was up on its end with the weir box at the bottom and the other end at the, at the top. Uh, and I was, I, it was on a piece of cardboard. I already know I think what's going to happen. But yeah, <laughs> so I was sliding it around on this piece of cardboard. It was working great. Yeah. 
until I uh, I backed it. I can't remember exactly what happened, but basically I knocked a, a, an electric drill, cordless drill off uh, a kitchen coffee table. Yeah. And it landed on the, the weir box. The weir box on Red Sea Reefers, or my one anyway, is glass. So it smashed this glass, yeah. cracked it, th- the length of the weir box. <coughs> A1 just spent 1,500 quid on a tank oh. and God knows how much on equipment and yeah. I smashed it. Not good. Like, ah. I, I, that wasn't what I thought you were going to do. That, that wasn't, I didn't, I didn't expect the drill bit. Um, yeah, yeah. But because I have done something similar to that where you go, look, never move a tank on your own <coughs> ever. If anyone's <laughs> listening to it, that was one of those situations where in the reality you were a bit probably too excited and you I wanted... just, it was just impatience i should have just yeah. waited until my yeah. mate was there yeah <laughs> so what i did once have you ever like had a tank where you is it's lying on its back oh no no no, no yeah. it, it, whenever you're moving a tank it's very important you lift it up like this straight up if you tilt it sideways you can crack the, the edge. like just the edge yeah of the and it's usually the one of the corners that will go and yeah. it, it happens with the tiniest move if it's on a hard floor so yeah so if you're on a tile floor wow just i've done that twice (laughs) so we we've talked about this before because you and i did the exact same thing on the cade i just got it and like the tiny you can't actually you almost can't see it but the tiny that i did the same thing i rested it really gently onto my kitchen floor yeah really gently and it just went yeah Big glass snapped off it. I was like, ah. Oh. And more often than not, the only, generally speaking, if you're moving a tank, it's new, or you've just bought it yeah. secondhand, but it's still yeah, a new yeah, tank yeah. for you. Yeah. The, obviously, if you're moving houses, then, but generally, it's new. <laughs> and uh, so it's it's like heartbreaking when that happens. Yeah. Um, it just... can be repaired, but that, it, to be fair, that's you wouldn't know if I didn't tell. Yeah. If, if I showed you the tank and didn't tell you, you wouldn't ever spot it. It hasn't harmed the. It's not like with the with the weir box on my Red Sea tank that needed a fix. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but this doesn't. It's just fine. You you wouldn't even notice it. But God, it's so stupid. <laughs> something, something else that happened on. Uh, we're starting with the low ones on when I first got no a hurry, brand hurry. new tank, brand new one thousand liter tank. It wasn't brand new for me, but it, it was a secondhand, but brand new for me. Sorry. Um, I put a foot long scratch in it on day one. <laughs> oh god! Day one. How I don't even know how I did that, but yeah. I, I the next morning I came down. I was like, "Who has touched my tank?" <laughs> Someone's broken in and scratched. <laughs> so, like, how is it? Like, it wasn't there yesterday, and it's there today. I, to this day, I still wonder if like one of my family was like ah, da, 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 was <laughs> playing around with it. But I'm pretty no, I'm pretty sure it was me because no one that- no one would have touched it. Do you know, on my water box tank, I've got a massive scratch. It's about three or four inches long. Yeah. It's on the far side, so I don't really see it. But when I'm out there, when I'm, when I'm out there scraping the glass, I, it's quite a deep cut. Yeah, I've got no idea. It must, uh, no, no, it must have been a, a grain of sand or something got stuck behind yeah. the algae magnet. But it's a, it's, there's no sand in that tank, and it's like, I don't know how it happened. It's not like you would think it was something that you would when you when it happens, you can't help but miss it. Yeah. I've got no idea. It's the same thing. The the water box in the in the kitchen has got luckily no scratch on the front panel, so I'm very very <laughs> careful after that after that. But somehow there is a scratch that's about two inches on the side panel. Now <clears> I wonder <throat> that could have happened when we were moving the tank. If someone had a ring and they yeah, when they were yeah. like helping lift it, it, it was a difficult tank to move. It was very heavy. Um, so that that I wonder if that's what it was, but. Um, yeah, just again, these scratches just start to materialize. And you go, where did this come from? It's the same. I'm same on my main tank. I've got a one inch scratch. No, I, quite on the inside it? of the tank. Yeah, you only have one one inch. Scratch oh well, it's like, when I say a scratch, it's like an it's 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 a deep scratch. Oh, okay, yeah, <laughs> and you don't ever see it. But to be fair, like so, most tanks, if it, if a tank is scratched to hell, forget yeah. it. But most tanks, when you drain a tank after you've had it up for a few years, suddenly you're like, oh, wow, it's really scratched. Whereas when a tank is full of water, you don't tend yeah. to see the scratches. You get used to them. It's no, no, like... no. You actually you can't see them. Oh. I could see that. I could see that foot long yes. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it does if it's like a deep one. Yeah, but then I, it, you once it's happened, you just have to ex, you have to just accept it. There's nothing you can do. You can't. There's no point in being annoyed. That's what I realized. There was yeah. no point in me being annoyed that I put this foot long scratch in it because me being annoyed doesn't make any difference. It's not no. going to get any better. So yeah, I might yeah. as well just accept it. And that's what I did. 
So, and you, I, I've, I had that tank for quite a few years, and I, you do, you did used to notice it, but you just get used to it. So that so. you fades into the back. It's like people always comment on my wallpaper. I never see yeah. it. I never notice it because it's like you're, you're the lucky one then. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but after a while, with anything like that, you just you, it just fades out into the distance. Yeah, you don't yeah. notice it. But, um, I did. I uh, there was a, <clears throat> about a year or so ago, maybe a bit more. Uh, we had in my village there was going to be a power cut. It was a planned power cut. The electric company needed to do some works, yeah. so they gave us like a month's notice, maybe even more wrote to every house in the area and they said it's going to be out it's probably going to be out all day just so you know yeah and i was like wicked i know what i'll do i've got like, i've got a battery backup for my uh my powerhead my uh the eco tech one the victor so that's fine but i'll buy a petrol generator because if it's going to be out all day maybe something goes wrong maybe it's out for two days you know, good to have a jenny, a jenny. Yeah. so <laughs> i uh i got closer and closer to the time and i, I realized that i'd actually never tested my battery back up on the on the on the ecotech on the vectra uh sorry the yeah the return pumps the sorry the powers <laughs> and i was like i don't need to test it because it works i bought it brand new i've had it for a couple of years it'll work uh, but uh, uh, and it got closer and closer to time and then suddenly i just decided i don't know why i didn't just test it this was a stupid it would have taken two minutes to test yeah, it. yeah yeah if maybe even three seconds and then the day came around the power cut happened and it didn't work my battery backup didn't work. There was a fuse that had gone in the in the cable. Yeah. So I replaced the cable, but it took like three days to arrive. <clears throat> so the, the first thing, that didn't come on. Uh, and I was at home when this was happening. I was sitting there by the tank waiting for the power to go off. It did. And my battery backup failed. I was like, right, okay. And now it's since it's, that cable's replaced, it's fixed. That's fine. But I was like, okay, it doesn't matter because I got a generator. And I bought this generator a week before, but I hadn't set it up. I hadn't tested it. <laughs> yeah. So I set it up. <laughs> it didn't work. It, filled it with petrol. <laughs> didn't bloody work. There was some there was some fault. I phoned the company. Yeah. And they were like, oh yeah, this sometimes happens with the uh I can't remember what it's called now. But there was some problem with it and it wouldn't work. And I was like, ah, and this was like I'd been trying everything to get it set up. So this was like two or three hours in. And I was like, oh God. So at that point, I then had Power to get <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. It was this was, it was out all day, so I then had to go out and buy one. But because it was like three hours in, and yeah. I would I'd weighed up early on. I was like, should I just go and buy a new one, or should I try to fix it? And I, I'd lost like two hours doing that. I should have just gone out and got a new. And by that point, I'm three hours in, and I'm starting to think three hours is probably fine, but it's at the point where it wouldn't be surprising if things started to go south. Yeah. Oxygen runs out, so I went. I. I did like a hundred miles an hour <laughs> on the on the way out to the to the shop to to get this new generator picked up. I know, yeah, uh, it was in a hundred mile an hour speed limit, so it's fine. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> just, <laughs> but I picked up, so I got a new generator, got it back, and it did work. Yeah, and fortunately, I then uh, uh, I got that set up, and it was running for a couple of hours before the power came back on. But just I, I knew that you should you should always test your equipment first in that situation the generator is kind of understandable because it's a bit of a pain in the ass but not yeah. really, that's still bloody lazy but not to test the battery backup yeah and i and i thought like in the weeks before i was like should i test it i don't need to I, i'd rather save myself five seconds <laughs> that, that well while we're on the topic of battery backups that was one of my biggest failures there, there have been a couple of times where you know, it's like a catastrophe where it's like a whole your whole tank is affected. Um, and I had uh, I never had a battery backup before. I just didn't need it. Never, right. never thought I needed it. Didn't didn't come into my head on a day to day basis. Never even thought about it. Uh, and then I had these really, really big fish by that point. Uh, yep. This was in the thousand liter tank and very, very oxygen hungry fish. And the power went out for four hours in the middle of the night. And I, Jeez. I was actually, I wasn't staying at the house at the time. It was in my parents' house, and I had a call from mum. And I remember this to, as clear as anything. I was at the call, and she went, "Ryan, everything's dying." And I was like, "What do you mean?" <laughs> and she, I said, "Is the power on and everything?" She went, "Yeah, everything's everything's on. Everything's fine. Like there's nothing. Lights are on. Everything, but literally everything is dying." And like you, I drove at exactly the speed limit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. um, because I was about. <clears throat> 20 minutes away and i got there and literally there was probably like 20 fish that were just dead on the bottom of the tank 
And it was all because, and I know it was four hours, and I know it was a power cut because the oven was out by four hours. So if you don't have a battery yes. backup, yeah, yeah, <laughs> get a battery backup because it's you. It's like an insurance policy. They're a pain in the ass, and you don't want them, and they're expensive. They're not even that expensive, but you don't want them until you need them, and then when you need them, you're glad you've got it. <laughs> yeah. So for sure. But, so I've 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 got a um I don't have uh ecotech pumps on either of these tanks up here, so I can't get the the the, the standard battery backup. Yeah. Um but what I am thinking of doing is buying you can get these like a it's like a power bank made by Anchor, big they're called solar generators, but it's just a massive battery basically. Yeah. And I'm thinking about getting one of those. By um, this point, you with that many, you might as well just get like a generator that turns on automatically, so you've got the whole house going. Yeah, it's true, but they're not that expensive. Trouble is, there was one that was on, it was on uh, Amazon for two hundred and nine quid, and I was like, "Should I get it? Should I get it? Should I get it?" And it was discounted, and I was like, "No, I'm not going to get it. Oh, should I get it?" And then it went up to two hundred fifty quid, and as soon as it went up, I was like, "I, I, I wish I bought it." And now it hasn't come back down, so I Same. haven't bought it. But the thing, the one context for this, so in the UK, which is where most people watching this um, are from, I think. Um, we don't have power cuts that like in America. Touch wood, touch long, wood, touch wood. Touch wood. <laughs> long power cuts are a big, a big thing in America. Like Texas had major ones last year, didn't they? Yeah. But in the UK, as a general rule, the power rarely goes out. And when it does, it's normally five minutes, and that's every couple of years. It doesn't happen often. So we so we're a bit more, it's it's not as necessary, which is why you weren't bothered. Um, yeah. but it's still like just if you've got all you need is it's, I wish more companies. Would would make uh, like the the ecotech one is brilliant. Uh, yeah. It's expensive for what it is, uh, and it's heavy because it's a lead acid battery, but it's fantastic. It does the job, and I wish other. It's easy because you just plug it in, plug it into your your power head, done. I wish other companies would do the same thing, make it that easy. Um, I'd love to see that. Jack, I'd love to see a Jekyll one. But... <laughs> there was one power cut here, which was probably like eight years ago now, which lasted for about four or five days it was over christmas and it, it was it so the my house was fine the street next to me had no power for five days <laughs> can you imagine how lucky that yes, is yes i remember you said that yeah yeah it's like that was insane like because i wasn't even in the country at the time i was out of the in country australia, I was in, weren't you? Yeah. yeah i was in australia which uh, that's gonna lead me on to my next one because i have one which i to this day have no idea what happened and you won't have any idea what happened either i reckon mm. i have a very small idea okay i went to australia for six weeks i came yeah. back and i said to the people looking after the tank don't worry about cleaning the glass just feed the fish everything will be everything runs automatically everything will be fine don't yeah. touch anything um i did I, in reality i didn't want them scratching the glass <laughs> yeah. so i said don't don't clean the glass so i come back after six weeks and you cannot see into the tank it is like literally just a solid green you cannot see and i came home and the very very first thing i did i cleaned off every single panel of of glass okay and what and then for whatever reason the fish died dying no idea why oh, really no idea now the only thing i could possibly come up with was the and this is really like grasping its straws when algae is damaged it absorbs oxygen yeah and, yeah and i think that was and it wasn't like it happened two days later <laughs> it happened within a few hours it it was very very quick and i just to this day i still even with now i have so much more experience i still mm. don't know what happened that day i was going to say something to do with oxygen but i couldn't explain it and so you think that it was damaging so it sucked in all the oxygen yes like self-preservation yeah. maybe yeah or... Al basically algae when it's when it's yeah. Um, been cut or anything absorbs oxygen and i just think because i cleaned off every single panel of the glass um there was obviously a lot of damage to it um but even that just still the only other thing it could have been was a contaminant of some sort but yeah that was yeah that was unrelated and you didn't realize or whatever. it just happened and well it, it was literally after i cleaned the glass so it must have been a contaminant on me i probably came back with sun cream on me or something still <laughs> yeah but it's just a yeah. weird one because n normally you can go oh look this that coral's died because i let the salinity go too high or it was a bit hot that day 
or those corals touched each other. But with this, it was like, no, I, I literally cannot. I just don't know what, what caused it. Yeah. Bizarre. So it is bizarre. <laughs> But and that it making any that's not really a stupid mistake though. But any making any significant change, yes, can have a, a big impact, can't it? And oh, I definitely. thought the only thing I, I would have thought is something to do with nutrients. Maybe there's a sudden nutrient spike, but that doesn't make any sense. No, <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't it wouldn't kill the fish, it wouldn't kill them that quickly. No, Someone said no. it's some algae blooms can kill ecosystems. So it, it's not a bloom, but in theory, if algae can there's no reason in a confined space. There's no reason that the in theory the algae can kill if, if you see what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but bizarre. So there's I, I've always had a, a few issues with uh, electricity and water. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> which we all know mix really well. Yeah. So the most recent one was I set my um, my smart tester, which has got dosing pumps and draws water in from the tank. I set it up above my plugs. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that was. And then I didn't tighten the thing properly, and it sprayed water everywhere. Um, so that was that was bad, but we I talked about that last week. The other one I did was, and this was I it I took it took me ages to work out what happened. But this was on my I had a four foot tank a few years ago, and I had, or maybe it was my three foot tank, whatever. I had a um, the, suddenly just the lights went out in my house. It went dish. It was a new built house, so no, it's fine, and everything went off. And I was like, that's weird. Went over to the tank turned uh, so i turned the lights back on uh, the house back on the, the the trip meter back on and everything went off straight away again and i was like right so something's tripping it yeah yeah <laughs> obviously yeah you know. um so i tried to i turned off everything on the tank and then put the electricity back on and it was fine but i, I was trying to work out what it could be because what you can do then is turn on each thing one at a time right, but, yeah but i was trying to i was like what the hell is it and i was looking in the the cabinet no nothing obvious at all until I realized I had a, um, a an algae refugium. So I had a, a light hanging in the sump. Yeah. And it was hanging high enough to be out of the way. Not a problem. But my filter sock, I hadn't changed for a long time. And it had clogged. So the water was going, spilling out over the top of the filter sock. Whereas obviously normally it's supposed yeah. to go out yeah, the bottom three lower. inches lower. Yeah. And it had, it had spilled out over the top and then into the light. And trip the light. It took me ages to find that, <laughs> but that's what was doing it. I just remembered another one where you're talking. Then, yeah, go on. But, like this was the very, very first mistake I ever made. I this was my very first tank. I got bought it secondhand, and it, it, I got a heater and I plugged that heater in to see if it was working because it was secondhand and it exploded in my hand. <laughs> Bloody hell! Glass heaters cannot be turned on outside the tank. <laughs> oh, I did, did the exact same thing with the freshwater tank. Yeah. So what, it, like you, you turned it on and it exploded straight away. It was within like and I, 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 I can't remember. It was a long time ago. I could have put it down, come back, picked it yeah, up, but okay. it basically exploded in my hand. <laughs> so, I, or, so I wanted to see if it was hot. So, but I just and that was the day. Remember, I bought those fish and they and I sold the fish for four hundred pounds the next day. Well, I had to keep those fish alive. <laughs> yeah, for, oh, for literally twelve oh. hours. And I was, I was, what I was doing is I was, I was boiling the kettle with water and then putting dechlorinator in it and then mixing right. that up with new water to keep the tank warm enough. And yeah, I was doing that all it. night <laughs> because oh for That's me, 400 quid, <laughs> 400 pounds at the time was massive. Yeah, and I was, yeah. I was like, cause I, I started my tank with literally no money yeah. and I, I thought I was being so clever because I was like, ha, oh, I got it for free. And then I was like, ah, oh, they're going to die. <laughs> they probably would have been fine, to be fair. But <laughs> yeah, but I see, we know that <laughs> You now, don't know that exactly, yeah. But yeah. you didn't know that then. And yeah, because at room temperature, the fish probably would have been fine. Yeah. They were a bit yeah. like cold. <laughs> they, were a bit, they didn't move yeah, around yeah. too much. Yeah, yeah. So, but <laughs> yeah, they, they were frontosas anyway. They don't move around too much anyway. So, this, so I did the same thing with a freshwater tank as well. I, I had a, a glass heater. I think I was doing a water change or something and I'd forgotten. So obviously with a, a freshwater tank, you've got your glass heater on the back of the tank because you yeah. don't have sumps generally. Um, and so I'd, I'd lowered the water level and it was below the heater. So the heater was exposed, but I'd not turn the heater off. And this was the, the way I learned yeah. that <laughs> you're supposed to do that. And yeah. so the heater was like, oh, I'm trying, it was now trying to heat the room up. <laughs> yes, yeah. And so it was on full heat. 
And then as I, I think I poured a load of water back in, like cold yeah. water, because I didn't care about the temperature stuff. And it's just shattered instantly. I was like, <sighs> uh, yeah. so it smashed. Well, that's exactly what happened, but in my hand. <laughs> yeah. Did you cut yourself? I could, no, nah, I don't think so. No. <clears throat> it's hard to remember. By this point, it was like midnight. I was, I was so stupid. I went to the guy's house just to go look at the tank. It was about an hour and 40 minutes away or something. And I went, and I was, so I was going to come back at the weekend. I went, oh, I'll just take it now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With no planning. Yeah. No, it's, it's right. funny the things that we do. Like back then, you, like a minute ago, you literally just said, I didn't care about the temperature difference. Back, like, yeah, exactly, yeah. you wouldn't do that now, would you? No, no, no. Like, if it's and, 0.2 degrees difference, I'd be like, oh no. <laughs> when, when I was looking at, um, when I was looking, uh, when, I, when I was writing my ones for this, um, one of the ones I put, which is not really a mistake, but it's, it's like a long term mistake. And I think so many people will probably will make this mistake. I never tested phosphate probably for like four years. I just had no idea. Just didn't really? do it. This was remember. Did you so have a lot of algae. <laughs> I had sad corals. I had tangs, and I only had soft corals. So I just, but I couldn't okay. tell you what my. And there was no, there was no Hannah checker. This was yeah, yeah, fourteen years ago. Um, well, even if, even if it was ten years ago, like it just, I just didn't, just didn't check it. Just and and I would have been the same as lots of other people where. You put a coral in, it doesn't do very well. I wasn't buying like torches and things like that then. Yeah. And you just go, oh, that coral just maybe just didn't make it. You didn't go, oh, that coral didn't make it because my phosphate is crazy high. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But we had to deal with the like the color changing phosphate test kits. And those yeah, were like the hardest yeah. ones to read. Yeah, they're tricky, aren't they? So so yeah, I, I put down I didn't I didn't understand the value of testing back then. I don't think it was like Obviously, people were testing, but I don't think. Remember, YouTube wasn't around then, so you kind of just had to just wing it. Yeah, you, you literally just yeah, had to like learn from books, and they'd go, "Oh," and they would say test calcium and alkalinity and magnesium, but they didn't or nitrate, but they weren't. Look at yeah. if you look at some of the old books now; it's like insane. Some of the stuff they told you. I need to reread um, the conscientious marine aquarist because it's actually a little bit. It was a brilliant. It's a brilliant book, or was yeah. at the time, but it's actually a little bit. I bet it'd be out of date, massively out of date. Yeah. In fact, a lot of stuff that would be bad advice now. Effectively. I, I put, one of my ones got an under gravel filter in it. One of my yeah, yeah. like marine books talks about having an under gravel filter and or using is. ocean rock. Ocean rock. Oh yeah, yeah. okay. That uh, I think conscientious marine aquarist talks about um, Berlin method. So that they've developed uh, on moved on to skimmers, but like yeah, tons yeah. of rock. Yeah. I, so in, I had uh, on my freshwater tank, and this is kind of similar to along the same lines we're talking about. I had um, I, I got fed up of mixing up um, dechlorinated water all the time, so I bought this massive vat, like a bin for um, yeah. for the water, and it was made from, from reef safe plastic, <laughs> so food safe plastic. But I I used to leave the I had a tube in there. I bought a drill. You can get a drill attachment that acts as a pump, a water pump. So first off. I used to I used to use this this drill water pump that okay. had all sort of grease in it and all this sort of stuff. But I I, I needed to I needed to get away for tra of transferring the water from my my bucket to my yeah. tank, and I decided I was going to use a hose because you know it's a hose pipe that's fine, isn't it? It's just made to transfer. Oh yeah, water. yeah, yeah. And, and I yeah. used to leave the hose in the bucket, and it would basically decompose. And like I tested my nitrate one day, and it was like a thousand. It was like yeah, because you're not meant to use hose pipes, are you? No, hose pipes are not reef safe, and this was fresh water. But you know, it, yeah, yeah. It, it was like it was soiling the water. Yeah, and it's like oh right, yeah. So I just thought why... while we, while you were talking, I literally that's why I was laughing because I thought of another one. <laughs> well, keep, you can keep going, keep going. <laughs> but that I'm, we're coming on to there's I, I've, the other stuff on my list is basically about there was one stupid thing I did uh, last week which was quite annoying. With my um my clarity hadn't been turning properly okay. for a long yeah. time, uh, and I was like, oh, I don't know why that is, but you know, whatever. I just left it, <laughs> and then I realised the other day that there's one of the screws I hadn't tightened the screw, and so yeah. water was just passing out of that. So I tightened it up again, and now it's working. Uh, but it'd been like that for two weeks, uh, and it's like. It's one of those Why things can... where you go, I can't really be bothered to look into this. But it's so easy. All you need yeah, to I do know. is look and see. Because normally with that sort of thing, there's some kind of mechanically obvious problem. Yeah. But I just I assumed it was going to be difficult. I was like, nah. 
one of one of the <laughs> calcium tubes on one of the systems is not working for whatever reason at the moment. Um, and that was so I'm now manually dosing calcium on one system because I can't be bothered <laughs> to look into remember the, the dosing lines are, are meters and meters in that room. So it's not an easy process yeah, okay. to change it over. So I'm just, I'm dosing manually because I can't because I can't bother to do, to look into it. It might be something simple. I might Definitely. it might simply literally be running RO water through the lines to see yeah, if that yeah, can like out. unblock something. Um but I know what you mean. Sometimes you sometimes these things are a bigger deal in our head than they are in reality. It, yeah, you feel like it's gonna be a pain in the ass, and then you do it, it's a 10 minute job. So at yeah. the moment I've I've been dosing uh magnesium on my main tank. Oh, hang on a second. Yeah, I dosed magnesium to get it up on my main tank. I'm just trying to work out why. I, anyway, uh, but I, I dosed magnesium separately, and I uh, it, it was it get through, it get through quite a lot. And I've noticed uh, like a couple of weeks ago that the the magnesium container isn't really going down. It's still quite it's been heavy for ages, and it should last like two or three weeks to empty the whole thing. Yeah. And I and I, I tested to see if magnesium was coming out, and it is. But I can't be bothered to go beyond that. And actually, and it's still half full. So something's going wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I can't be bothered to check. And it's well, like, a, again, it's a 30 yeah. second job. And I haven't tested magnesium for a few weeks. Not good. Not good. The other Shall things I... on my list are, are, are RODI overflows. <laughs> yeah, I had that one of mine. I, I had that the, one on my one as well. Everyone the, probably got that on theirs. <laughs> yeah, the two worst ones. It happens all the time. The two worst ones were the first time I had an RODI filter. This was in my new build house again. It was yeah. in a kitchen, fortunately, but I, I left. There was no booster pump, thank God, but I left it on overnight. Yeah. <laughs> and fortunately, it was a small RODI filter, but I came down. It was like 30 gallons per day or whatever, but I came downstairs in the morning, at six o'clock in the morning when I was getting ready to go to work and the kitchen floor was flood, completely were, flooded. Were you renting that place or was it? No, I, I bought you owned it. it. Okay. But completely flooded. Yeah, and I had to, like, I had to pull in all the towels in the house, yeah. mop it up, put it in a bucket. Yeah, uh, and that happened a couple of times. <laughs> you were living by yourself then, weren't you? Yeah. So it was just one towel. <laughs> well, <laughs> you, you know, no, you but, all yeah, the towels probably. in the house. Yeah, so it was yeah. just one a towel. Little tea towel, little kitchen towel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and then the most recent one I did that was bad was in my so in my living room, in my main my main tank in my living room. My freshwater reservoir is I've got one made is bespoke glass tank basically. Yeah. That sits behind my tank, so it's out of the way. Uh, and I I now have the the RADI filter connected up directly to that. And and because of that, because it's in my living room and it, I can't afford for it to ever overflow because wooden floors and all this sort of yeah, stuff would yeah. be a disaster. I'm really careful. And I always set a timer and always do or whatever. But this one time about a month ago, <laughs> I forgot. Yeah. And I fortunately I remembered, I just happened to remember. I ran into the living room <laughs> and it, it yeah, it literally just started dribbling over the top. Yeah. So I stopped it, and I so you got like literally like ten milliliters of it. But if if I'd have left that half an hour, there yeah. would have been like ten liters, well thirty liters, because <laughs> yeah, this is yeah. I've this is now I've now got a big return pump, a, a, a RDI um, filter with two yeah. boosters on it, so it goes quick. But that was so that could have been that Mrs. Reesdog would not have been happy. <laughs> I um I have a different sort of issue with water <laughs> for my one, so. Remember I said I started the tank and I had no money? I was doing it with sea, natural seawater as well mm. at one point. So I was driving to the beach <laughs> and I was putting on waders and I was okay. walking in at slack tide. Um, so it's so it's still. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. And so you can literally walk in, fill them up, walk back out. I did that loads of times. There was one time I got it wrong <laughs> and I <laughs> thought, and it, it was no longer slack tide. Slack tide doesn't last for very long. I think right. it lasts for like 15 minutes or half an hour. I can't remember now. Okay. Someone will probably correct me. So if you get it wrong, you get it wrong. And I thought, yeah. <laughs> and it also changes each time, the time each day. And because yeah. I could only do it at the weekend, it was like I had to do, I had to just go and do it. So I went in and I couldn't have got it more wrong because I got hit by a wave <laughs> and that wave oh. knocked me over. <laughs> oh, and then it hell. filled my waders with water. <laughs> Which I realise now is probably bridge. dangerous if you think yeah, about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was. I was soaked, 
And the, so I didn't have a change of clothes because I didn't expect this to happen. So no. I, had to, I had to get into my car and drive home completely soaking wet. <laughs> completely. Salt water as well. Salt water Stinky as well. seaweed salt water. And it was December. Ah. Oh. And I just, I, I went, that's a sign. This is it. I was going to say, that never, was the last time you yeah. Never, ever, <laughs> ever again. And um, to be Where fair, was that? Was that near you? It was in Bognor Aegis, so it was like a half an hour away. Oh, oh okay. Because <laughs> I drove, a... It was so cold. I drove out yeah. with a heat run and no shirt on because, oh like, oh my god, yeah, because yeah. I, I, actually, I was literally, I remember, I was in my underwear. I was just driving because people saw me. I was just driving <laughs> in my underwear. How is that guy doing? Yeah. December. Yeah, god. But, uh, yeah, There's a place was... in Chichester called Bosom. It's yeah, yeah. Bosham. Yeah. I didn't and know they, about that at the time. There's this thing on uh, there's on YouTube called the Bosom Car Wash, and it's right. It's, the, the, the tide goes uh, tide goes out, and so people park their cars where it looks like you can park. Yeah. And an hour later, their cars under three feet of water. Yeah, <laughs> well, it was like that basically. Yeah. I was under the water. Ah, oh, December as well. December in the UK. It, it was so <laughs> cold. Yeah, it was. I was like, I'm not sure I'm going to survive this. <laughs> <laughs> Because it, the water must have been like one degree, or so, I don't know yeah, what, what yeah, temperature yeah. it gets down to, but it was yeah. like, and there, I had no <laughs> towels, I had nothing, <laughs> literally nothing. So, and the reason I drove half an oh, where's sorry, hang on, <laughs> wrong button. The reason I drove half an hour was because that that was a place you could walk into, uh, and it was fine. But right. also, I, mean, I didn't mind driving half an hour because it was next to the fish shop, so I was going there anyway. Ah, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, <sighs> I can't that remember. Was, that was not good. I want to let me see if I've got any others. I, I spoke about the calc last week where I put that in automatically. Put the powder in, yeah. Put the powder in. Um, and the other thing I put put was when I've added, there's, there's times when I've added fish which were not compatible with each other, which, yeah. Were, and the same, similar That's to when you yeah. with your Harlequin, Harlequin Tusk and a jawfish, I ate it straight yeah. away. <laughs> I had a porcupine puff fish that was just the devil. He started you know eating, we, biting. Yeah, he bit like a chunk out of something. Didn't chunk, it? Yeah, you don't see him so much anymore. I haven't seen a porcupine puffer in ages. No. In fact, I haven't seen I, any puffers in ages. I saw one in a, 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 a shop, a small chain of um, fish shops in the UK uh, a while ago. It didn't shut down. It's not far from where you were, Lansing. A anyway, small, it's a it small was, chain in It was Lansing. made in Aquatics. Oh, why did you say that? <laughs> I know. I don't know. <laughs> it's the same thing we were talking about earlier. You say it loads of times. <laughs> I know. I think it was in, I can't remember what it was. It's now shut down. Yeah. It wasn't a million miles from you. I was in Finden. Finden. That was the one. Yeah. And they, they had a, I was in there just uh, looking for whatever. And they had a, a puffer fish in there and yeah. someone was asking to see it. And they were chasing, chasing it around with a stick, trying yeah. to stress it out so it puffed up. And I was like, God. That was probably the one. I took my evil pufferfish back there. It was that one. <laughs> it probably was that one. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, we have, to, we have to teach it a lesson. Yeah, exactly. No, I, I know what happened to my one. My one went to that fish shop and then I saw the person who bought it. And I was like, How I mean? ain't saying nothing. <laughs> All bastard, yeah. <laughs> I was like, look, this guy needs to learn on his own. I saw, um, I, there was a, there was a, there's, there's been so many fish shops over the years where they just don't exist anymore. They just they yeah. just got Cambridge Coral Tech was one which was good. There was uh, Tropical yeah. Paradise in over yeah, in Portsmouth, yeah, which was. Yeah. Um, there was another one that was in like in. What was the one in, in Southampton? Um, Innovation, Innovation Aquatics. I'm talking about more older ones, but yeah. but yeah, um, <laughs> I remember the uh, Tropical Paradise. They had four Clarion Angels. They're like four thousand pound angelfish. Maybe that's why they went out of business. <laughs> yeah, probably, they probably died. And then they're like, oh, shit, we can't yeah. keep going. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but it's funny because you, someone walks into a shop and they'll see a 4,000 pound angel fish and they'll go, that's a good shop. That, that shop, that's doing well because they're buying gem tangs and those angel fish. Yeah. But in the reality, that's not even remotely how it works. And often the shops that are selling like what people would describe as the bread and butter stuff are the ones that are actually have been going for years and years and years. I, I, I don't know. I'm not sure if there's a correlation with that or not, but yeah, there's there, there, a lot of the time when you see fish like that in local fish shops, it's because the owner or whoever's bought the fish is like you've sometimes you buy a coral because you're like, Oh, that's cool. 
Yeah. And it's because you're an enthusiast yeah. and you're like, I want that. And then you get it and you're like, oops, I've just spent. <laughs> yeah, but I wouldn't buy four Clarion Angels. No, 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 true. Maybe they maybe they had the buyers lined up. Yeah. That was I used to go there when I was brand new to the hobby. So that was a good shot. There was one near Dartford. There was one near, um near you in Guildford somewhere. It was an old one. They had a they had a, 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 a um you know, a dual trigon tree, t- tri- tri- you yeah, know, the corner yeah, yeah. dual yeah, tank. Yeah, the... It had this yeah, yeah, yeah. Ma- this puff fish. I'm not joking, was like this. It was a dog <laughs> face, an adult dog face puffer fish. It could barely move Fair in that off. tank. Yeah, okay. it was a store pet. And they used oh. to breed, they used to breed sharks in the back as well. They had these big. Someone in the chat might remember this shop. They had this. They had these massive like banded sharks. They used to breed them for the eggs. The little mermaid purse things. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. But all these places just disappear. Yeah, there was one in. Um... Uh, oh, what was it called? The guy who used to work at Reefkeeper Moss End, Malcolm. What was it called? It was in. Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> We've gone off on a tangent, haven't we? <laughs> I know, yeah, but that place shut down, and he then ended up working at um at another local fish shop and running yeah. their fragging stuff, and then he moved on. Um, but yeah, but there you go. Yeah, so lots of places shut down. Although the good places tend to stay open. Yeah. yeah. Um. But uh, they're really good places. But some do, some do come and go. To be there, fun. there is definitely a balance, I think, between um, high end stuff and just normal stuff. Because yeah, so many more people are buying normal stuff than high end well, stuff. A lot of a lot of uh, shops say that uh, fresh water is uh, what makes the money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was... Salt water is like ten percent. You selling yeah. neon Tetris is what keeps that keeps the lights on. <laughs> yeah, thousands and thousands of neon Tetris. Millions of neon Tetris. Yeah, I bought when I first had a, a freshwater tank. I bought like I don't know a dozen neon Tetris or whatever. Half of them went into the um, the the, the, the uh, filter. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> yeah, straight yeah. away because they were tiny, so they escaped down. And then you got to buy another half a dozen. So just... that's how they're, that's how they're keeping the shop going. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, and I remember I was going, I went into the shop and I was like, how do I get them to get bigger quickly? And he's like, feed them. We well, can't. <laughs> yeah. yeah I mean, feed them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, um, I've never, ever had any interest in fresh water. Just never, never. No, I, I did run a tank for a couple of years or a year, maybe, but it was, uh, I wanted to, I wanted salt water and I, I was dipping my toe in the water. It's classic style, but um, waste of time because you don't really learn anything. Yeah. I agree with the last comment. Clarions are boring. The juveniles are, are the juveniles are actually pretty cool, and they are a unique color of orange. Um, a clarion. Oh, angel. those clarion. Yeah. yeah. So the, this is a. Oh, hang on a second. I've not got the screen up. I think I'm, the one I'm about to share you show you is a um, a juvenile where it doesn't look too bad. That one. Is it got? Yeah. So I actually the juveniles are actually quite nice. They, they look right. like king an, king angels. I'm pretty sure, yeah, king angels. Yeah, they look like the adults are a no. bit more like. Bland. Eh. Oh, is that but, Australian clarion? <laughs> that looks totally different to me. They're a pretty unique color of orange, though. What other fish is that orange color other than a goldfish? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. uh, yeah, that is not. I would not be spending six thousand pounds on one of those this one's cool because it's got a mcdonald's logo i think that one one was at tmc oh right quality marine brings in to u.s market that oh one maybe not then, but I'm, I'm, tmc had one at one point i remember them advertising unless they just took the picture with the m on it so oh that's funny yeah because <clears throat> tmc yeah because they i think they they did some sort of advertising with a t and then they put the fish in the middle and then the c <laughs> um there we go well on the, we have gone on, off on a bit of a tangent, but I've run it. Obviously, I, I have I've done millions of other stupid things. It's just yeah. I can't remember them. <laughs> and and I most will, aren't fish related. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, life choices. We will yeah. keep making. What we'll do is we'll keep making stupid uh, mistakes. Yeah. In order to get more content. And yeah, so, we'll have another we can, live stream. Exactly. Have another live stream. The only reason we'll make stupid mistakes. Um, was there anything else you want to talk about? Before? Yeah, you look like there is. No. 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 Do I join the truth is I actually desperately, desperately need to pee. <laughs> In that case, that's why I look like I've, I'm ready to go. <laughs> Perfect time to stop. Well, thank right. you all for. Oh, actually, you know what? There's a couple of questions. Oh, yeah, I bet there just is. Pull up. <laughs> right. Well, thank you all for for joining, guys. Ryan, thanks for coming along as ever, and we'll see you next thanks. week. Yeah, bye guys. See you later. Bye. Do you want to run?